as though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. Look at you now. Battle Brick, Battle Brick, Battle Brick Road. The Battle Brick Road to 100K begins now. You're not in Kansas anymore. Wait, what? Eric Weathers literally lives in Kansas? The Battle Brick Road to 100K. You're not in Kansas anymore. But Eric Weathers is. Be a part of it. Let's make it happen. The Battle Brick Road to 100K. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Battle Brick Road, only on Indiegogo. No sparrow. Does this word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn? It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead.
While they sleep, we work. While they sleep, we work. What is up, all you beautiful people? Welcome to the Waffle Lodge. This is Shanth and Jetty Art, and I am Shanth and Jetty. Let's do some painting, and let's see who's in the chat. What do you guys say? Uh, I'm currently working on uh, pages of Nosfero. I've got a lot of different stuff happening. I think that this might be... It's tough to say, but I think this might become my favorite page in the entire book. Uh, and and it's it's... Thank you, guys. Tonight we passed 25K. We passed 25K on Eric Weathers' uh, channel where we do the CG team with Rob Arnold, with Von Klaus, with Clint Stoker, and with myself. I was like, who's the other person? And, of course, Eric. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank Comicsgate. I want to thank you guys for everything you do, for showing up for these streams. I also, which kind of is mind-blowing, um, recently got monetized on this channel, which is is one thing but my last live stream of painting is the most watched video on my channel so thank you guys for all of that stuff thank you for making all of this stuff so exciting and speaking of of thanking people let's do it specifically let's see who's in the chat here today so we have got mr monkey boy 1969 up first tip of the hat to you we've got steven rockwood drawing always dropping links in the chat much love brother it's great to see you in here we've got leg kick one leg kick one hail and uh, always great seeing you on both game stream for double impact and this stream thank you for being here much appreciated we've got d wag in the house hail d wag it's great to see you in the chat brother uh and hail to the chat as well comics mate it's great to see you let me make sure i adjust this camera just a little bit here i don't know if i made things better or worse but comics mate, it's great to see you. Absolutely, just lurk, kick back, and enjoy your waffles, guys. That's how it is, Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. <laughs> Should this be eating someone named Heather Mentos uh, doll and not a lizard? I don't know. And actually, believe it or not, in the image that is a regular sized crocodile, and that is a Titanoboa, and uh, by a company called Rebor, and I freaking love it. Um, and I was able to use it as reference. So let's see if it's a tax write off. We've got the great Sumo Thori. Hail Sumo Thor. It's great to have you here in the chat. I hope you're having a great day. Um, and we're going to have some fun. Painting horror, talking comics, talking horror, painting comics. It's it's all the same thing here at the Waffle Lodge, as always. We've got the man, Michael Bancroft, my brother from another mother down under. It is great to see you. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. That's right. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. That'll be a copyright strike. Or they'll ban me from ever singing that song. People are saying hello to Michael Bancroft. MC Short saying, Shanth, you should make an art book of just the layouts of this book, even though those look great. I have a feeling there's somebody who's going to second that. Uh, John, if he shows up in the chat, is going to second that. I have a feeling. Arthur Line, great to see you, my friend. Uh, Stephen Rockwood dropping links to Michael Bancroft's fantastic upcoming book, the sequel to the smash hit, The Lucent, uh, The Lucent 2, Painted Death. So we're going from The Lucent 1, Waking Dream, to The Lucent 2, Painted Death. This is a story that spans generations. It spans eras, and it, it bends reality. It's a book that it, it bends reality in a way that is like if you – Oh boy, what what is it? It's like a cross between the wood between the worlds in uh, C.S. Lewis's Narnia stories, 
uh, if you cross it with Sherlock Holmes. I have no idea how to describe this book other than naming other books I like. Uh, we have got Bordeaux here. Good to see you, my friend. Tip of the hat. We have got The Voyager 47. Hail to you, my friend. Great to see you here in the chat. Uh, everybody's saying hello. Oh, it's that Bancroft guy. <laughs> there you go. Um, do you believe in truth, justice, in American way? I certainly do. And uh, so does my brother, Gabe El Taib. His brother and also my brother, David Williams. And the master, the man who wrote the book on inking, Gary Martin, who is uh, a friend of the channel, always in the chat, and uh, probably created one of the most influential books on the comic book art form. Um, it's, it's like How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. There's books like Framed Ink and Framed Perspective. But for me, the book that affected more people my year was Gary Martin's um, How to Ink Comic Books, or comic book, was it called? Uh, the Art of Comic Book Inking. Beautiful book. I've got it right over there. Uh, Michael Bancroft, and how alike Champ is to Ross. He is a happy little clown. That's absolutely right. Uh, Antoine Dennison, it cheers all. Absolutely. Um, Lloyd Burton, hail Champ, and the chat. Congrats on 25K. Lloyd Burton, thank you. You are no small part of that, my friend, and I thank you for being here. Terror in the Trenches by my other brother, Von Klaus, who is one of my pulp brothers. Check out Terror in the Trenches. It is moving right now. It is moving right now. Eric Weathers, Battle Brick Road. Now, here's something that is really cool to see. Uh, Eric's uh, Battle Brick Road is at 98K and almost 98.5. So a couple more um, backers. Let me see where it is right now, actually. I'm just kind of curious because I always – listen, guys, if you know this about Comics Gate, and I know you do, um, it's, it's not just about how well we do as individuals, which is important. It's why we're here. We're here to – get to be individuals, which is something that's come up uh, in uh, recent days. We're here to be free. We're here to be individuals and we're here to make money on our artwork so that we don't have to live how the mainstream makes it so that people have to live, whether it's mainstream comics, whether it's the academic industry, whatever you're coming out of the ability to make your own money and see um, really make a meaningful connection with the people who back and support your projects is why we're here so that we can test our ideas in this incredibly fertile ground that is comics gate. Um, and I'm looking at Eric's, uh, Eric's um, campaign. He's at 98, four, uh, four, five, seven. So he's uh, $43 away from 98, five. And I just backed him today. I just backed him again. I backed the, um, his cover first and I just backed the beautiful Kenneth Roquefort cover. So if anybody's looking to back that book, please, please check it out. Um, he's a sunflower. Oh, my gosh. Remind me to come back. Well, actually, I won't. Uh, I'll say it now. I just ordered my wife a piece of jewelry that's a sunflower necklace. So, uh, you know. Uh, there's also Jonathan Jetty's uh, beautifully painted comic, according to Stephen Rockwood. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, no Sparrow the Crypt Walker. Check it out. If you like Pulp, if you like the ladies, um, and frankly, if you like my brother, Lord Crackhead33, my brother in New England, um, my man in Amsterdam, uh, Lord Crack at 33. Jeremy, it's great to see you here. And yeah, go check out Nosfera the Crypt Walker. Comics made, woo! Yeah, exactly. Not woohoo. That's trademark and copyright, Eric Weathers. Uh, yeah, Lord Crack at 33. We work. He knows. He knows the work. He does the work. That is the way it is. Uh, greetings, everyone. Mighty Geek Studios, great to see you. Shoth, I'll have my usual. Absolutely. We are going to make sure that that chicken is. Chef's kiss, the perfect texture of crispy and then wonderful waffles and syrup. You are going to love it, my friend. Michael Bancroft, you can't have a conscience in the pimp game. That's absolutely true. I feel like Michael's a walking uh, playlist right now. Those lyrics, oh my gosh, the chat just jumped. The, I love how it's saying to me, move your, you know what, Sean. Uh, this page is looking insane so far. Thank you, Jeremy. Hi, everybody's saying hello. You earned it, man. Gracias. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, Shanta J, the chat, absolutely broken compass comics. It's great to see you. And I'll make sure I'm shouting out people's names too. The Voyager 47, Hill Bancroft, comics mate, Hill Shant, Stephen Rockwood drawing, Sumo Thori, Lord Crackhead, Michael Bancroft, Stephen Rockwood drawing. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, my, <laughs> Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. Hello, Omer Glitch. Good to see you. Uh, let's see here, uh, comics mate. Antoine Dennison, Sean, there are so many Egyptian influences in your art. You should have called the book. Wait for it. No. Oh. I bow to you, Antoine Dennison. That is, that's brilliant, by the way. Hail Comics Gate. Indeed, Michael Bancroft. I did um, request you not sing. 
<laughs> I know. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I second that. <laughs> I second that as well. That's right, guys. Uh, let's see. Steven Rock with Drawing Hill, Michael Bancroft from Arthur Line. Great to see you, Mighty Geek Studios. Here we are, born to be kings. <laughs> The princess of the universe. You guys are killing me. Uh, Shout out to Jetty Art on Instagram. Thank you again for that link. Hail, Bordeaux. Um, hey, Arthur Line. Mr. Monkey Boy. Hi, Arthur Line. Michael Bancroft, the Lucent, is Alice in Wonderland meets Phantom of the Opera and had a baby with Sandman who grew up to transition to the Matrix. <laughs> Can't say it any fairer than that, guys. Michael Bancroft saying, Hail, Lord Crackhead 33, Battle Brick Road. Indeed. All right. Now we can, uh, now let's talk turkey, as they say. Gobble, gobble. Y'all. So, Here's where we're at. Um, so one of the things that has been um, really important to the process. What's up, Rock Crim? Great to see you. Um, one of the things that's been really important to the process of making this book, and I know this is going to sound kind of crazy, but, you know, it's me, um, is that when I'm doing this work and I'm putting the stuff together, there's all these things that will assist you in the making of it. And one of the things is making sure you have the right colors of paint that you like to work with. And when I first switched over to this process, I was working with um, the colors I had and they're great, you know, and, and it gives a depth to the stuff. But one of the fun things has been is I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to push my color and my value in this work very well. Hey, what's up? Good evening to you, Aldous on the farm, just off Orwell Lane. Aldous, my man. Great to see you. Um, and so the best way I could think to put it is. I wanted richer reds in the stuff and I wanted richer purples. And I also wanted, um, as Michael Bancroft would say, to get those K values up, which is very important to make sure that there was a rich value range and black happening in this work. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to push the perspective of what you're seeing right here. And so that has been like where I do the panels right here, where the panels break up and they're kind of these wrappings in positive and negative form gets kind of mixed together. That has been, um, been really great for me working in this form. But there are certain colors that I like to use that are muddier colors that allow me to accentuate the colors that pop more. So for example, right here, um, when people look at a painting like this, where I've got this kind of blue green, and this is a very small panel. If I move this out, you can kind of see what I mean, where there's this blue green happening right here and this beautiful red. This works to the extent that I can mix in more grays and yellow ochres around it and build the value up. And you start to see that really happening in this section up here in the painting and some of the stuff that's happening in here where Laurel is uh, unfortunately in trouble. And when I'm working on this, one of the values that was important for me and the hues that was important to me was when I'm building the base for these pyramids. And guys, I have just been dining on Egyptian documentaries all day today. I love documentaries on ancient Egypt. There's a Pro Walks, one of my favorite YouTube channels, because yes, I am that boring, where a guy walks around different locations, doesn't talk with a GoPro and shoots everything in high def. So he does a walk around the Great Pyramids. So you're seeing him look up at the pyramids and you're like, I mean, I know they're big, but holy cow, they're big. Um, yeah, when it is soft, it doesn't sound crazy. It just sounds soft. That's exactly. Am I, am, 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 it's more like, am, not am I out of my mind, but am I into my shop? Um, That sounds bad, actually. Um, let's see here. It looks amazing. Thank you so much, Omer Glitch. I appreciate it. Or is it Omer Glitch? I'm trying to make sure I pronounce everybody's name-ish because my name is Shanth. So you know how that is. Um, Sumo Thor, yes, everybody's saying hello. Yeah, unlike our dear friend Bancroft, I see you, Sumo Thor. So I mix up these colors, and now I'm using it the same way I use paint oftentimes, you know, which is I typically like to use water-based media, and I also like to do these things with glazes. So the first step for me in putting this stuff together is I'm doing almost a watercolor wash and what I'm required to have in order to do that is a very um, rich pigments. So I use heavy body acrylics. I don't use soft body acrylics because soft body acrylics are made for transparency. Whereas with heavy body acrylics, I can use a mixture of water in there. And because I'm using this uh, acrylic illustration board, it allows me to kind of glaze in these tones and the paper just absorbs it, you know, really eats it up, which is great. And that's how I'm going to start to put the form into these pyramids. Now, I love watching 
you know, these documentaries, which is like these ones that they did. Uh, um, what is it? Uh, gosh, what was that one? It was um, Pharaoh's Obelisk was one. Uh, Riddles of the Sphinx was one. And they have all the different historians there and everything like that. And it's not that I'm trying to do something that's realistic. If you look at these pyramids, you will realize that they're out of position for being the great, you know, the, the great pyramids of Egypt. So this is kind of like an Elseworlds kind of, you know, not Elseworlds. It's just fantasy because it's not, it's not a, it is not an alternate reality. It is not a, one of those things. It's a place that has been lost to the desert. And it's a place that has been, you know, is, is mysterious. That's the, the attitude I want to take. But it's got this really nice, you know, depth where I want to put that moon up in the background, which I think you guys can see. That's the initial stages of washing in what the moon is going to be. Um, and then I want to use these panel transitions where I've got, you know, let me zoom this out a little bit here. Let's go. Let's move that just a bit more. Um, and I want to show that the night sky, if you look at it right, is filled with all of these odd creature squid-like horrors because that is what this is the nexus for. That is where things get kind of, you know, pulled into this world. <laughs> all this I see all you carry it well, my friend Michael Bancroft. We all have our preference for reference. True words have never been said, Mighty Geek Studios. Um, make sure to smash that like button. That's right. And congrats on uh, 1.04K subs. You're moving on up. I Rock Krim, I, at Krim, I absolutely am. And I am very grateful, very grateful to you guys for it. Um, you know, my wife was, my wife is so funny. She was like, um, she, she was talking to me about it. And she's like, uh, what are she's like what are the the super chats for and i was on eric's stream my motivation on eric's uh, weather stream is to get him super chats under the belief that we will be able to get him to buy those teenage mutant ninja turtles one fourth scale neca figures that's all it's about for me but on my channel i was like i was saying you know these these guys are here to to support painting painting comics it's it's a miracle to me <laughs> it really is a miracle to me and uh and i'm so grateful for getting to this number of subs and getting this many eyes on my work and getting the campaign to 25 K honestly, God, I, I start the night or the day and I just go to the desk and I start working for you guys. That's what it's about. And it, it's those things seem to just happen. The more we do the work and the more we show up, you guys are here and, and I'm grateful to you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Aliens. Oh, we were talking about that on the last stream. I thought it was a werewolf wearing a cookie. It is. It is if you want it to be. And listen, I'm not going to argue when it comes to dessert foods. Okay, so cookies or cake. If you see it in my work, then I've done my job. Um, I dig your design sense. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The pages look so good. Oh, my gosh. Tip of the hat to you, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, yep, Bordeaux saying, uh, Sumo Thori, hello. Yeah, some people are seen here. Mighty Geek Studios, let's see what the gods of Egypt think of your work. Exactly. Just then, Mighty Geek Studios, a lightning bolt came through my ceiling, and that was the end of Shanth. And people went, hmm. Maybe he should not have angered the gods of Egypt. Um, but I've always loved um, I've always loved Egypt from the standpoint ancient Egypt from the standpoint of uh, the aesthetics because those aesthetics have inspired so much of the human imagination when you see them in the, the human spirit because of the scale we're talking about in that work. Um, and and it, it just shows uh, the possibility of human endeavor and especially human endeavor when motivated with a powerful, um, a powerful spiritual connection, you know, to to, you know, the, the, the big questions, you know, whatever it is. And the obelisk, the pyramids, all of those things are, you know, an inspiration of that. And so is the the language of the hieroglyph. You know, it's just. It's amazing to me to see that stuff. They're just gorgeous stuff. And I see them in Blade. I see them everywhere. You know, people trying to reference that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. The gods do you work. The cookie should be a waffle. Amen. Um, let's see here. Uh, Khonshu is watching during the night. Exactly. And, and guys, I know I mentioned this last stream. I'm, I, I uploaded it, but I it's private now or it's unlisted now. Let's put it that way. But I am working on my four hour thunderstorm outside of the waffle lodge um video and uh it is it is something <laughs> we'll see if it we'll see what you guys make of it at some point but uh, it is being worked on so there you go um i i uploaded it 
and it's uh, HD, but it's a little wonky. It's not exactly what I think it uh, it could be, but you got to start somewhere. You know, my attitude is better to start, you know, something and give it a shot than, you know, stress about it. Just do the best job you can do, which is the key to getting things done like this book. Like, make no mistake, um, like Paul Masson, um, I will make no wine before it's time. But um, I also am one of those people where I want to make sure, like with the first two art books, it's all about getting it done. And it's about getting, I think excellence and productivity are not enemies. In fact, I think, you know, uh, well, someone said this on one of the recent streams, right? Like it's uh, the worst comic book is the one that doesn't get done, you know? And, you know, every time I get an art book done, there's this, that's the whole point of it is getting it done and fulfilling it. So that's what I love about this whole process. Let me see here. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, my glasses just fell down off my off my schnoz there. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Rock Crin, uh says, who are your inspirations for painted comics? Muth, Bolton. You know, I just started looking at Bolton stuff because a friend of mine uh, recommended I check out um, Shame. And then I figured out that he did, um, oh, gosh, uh, Army of Darkness. But Muth was the guy who really inspired me in college. I saw a mystery play. And I liked Alex Ross's stuff. I saw Alex Ross's stuff, but I was like, my brain just doesn't work that way. Like I, I explored that stuff, but um, when it comes to to it's weird because the biggest influence on this stuff is probably, and the first person who got me thinking about painted comics was Mobius, and Mobius is Arzak, um, and now Frazetta's an influence in this, and who else? And Alphonse Mucha, because I I could just see Alphonse Mucha doing posters. So I'm sure you get um, got that PO box right, Sean. Sure. Um, <laughs> Bretsky the Great. Salute, chat. Salute, artist extraordinaire, Sean. Thank you, Bretsky the Great. You are great, and I appreciate you being here. Broken Compass Comics. I can't wait to fight Anubis in the underworld. I'll be buried with an AK-47 and be 2,000 years ahead on weaponry. And let me tell you something, my friend. Anubis, to me, is very likely a werewolf. Um I tell the peeps at um, at work the Paul Mason thing um, when they want something. That's right. That's right. You got to say it slurred like Orson Welles before the re-recording. Uh, Kanchu has chosen his avatar for this generation, and his name is Nosfero the Cryptwalker. Amen. I appreciate that. Um, Orwell, um, Aldous on the farm just off Orwell uh, Lane. Muth's work on uh, Demetheus. Oh, yes. Uh, Demetheus's Moonshadow was um, outlook changing. Yeah. I've got the hardcover they just released. I got I bought the soft cover for it in college, and then I got the hardcover of it recently when it was released. And it's on my bookshelf over there somewhere. But it's it's fantastic, guys. If you have missed out on Moonshadow, it's especially some of the paintings in the end. I remember seeing those in college. Moonshadow is just got some beautiful work in it. John J. Muth is uh, is a, is a towering genius. Really great stuff. And so we're gonna do the same thing over here going to just mix in that what i'm doing is i'm just mixing compliments uh into the paint so i got purple dioxazine purple and the yellow ochre now here's the trick if you want to get a really good brown color what a lot of people do is they grab brown paint or they mix in a lot of colors that are quite similar till they get a brown so they mix together different reds different oranges if you want to get a brown that has a vitality to it, you mix it by mixing two complements into each other. So if you take purple and yellow and you mix them evenly, you're going to get a really rich kinetic brown because you can feel the, um, the tension between those two color opposites. If you mix red and green, you get the same thing. If you mix blue and orange, you get the same thing. So a lot of what you see me doing here with color is having pure colors pass through their complements or analogous colors. And that's what seems to always make that stuff work. Um, Marada the She-Wolf is Bolton at the height of his powers. All right, that's on the list, Antoine Dennison. That's on the purchase list. Um, the Meltdown short one uh, through four isn't for everyone, but if you appreciate the painted page, you'll dig it. I own that. I've got the um, what versions of that do I have? Because they released a couple of versions of it. Well, I have whatever one I got in 1997-ish or so, uh, but I love that. Havoc Wolverine by Kent Williams and John J. Muth. It's a great series um, if you like painted comics. I think that's a, that's a fair caveat to make on that. So now we're going to let that dry a little bit. And we're going to come back. The great thing about working with heavy body acrylics and using them like watercolors is they dry fast. They allow for glazing. 
so that I can kind of, it's not just about picking up um, the pace. Cause I was talking to my wife about this. I said, it's about having more time to do more. So I use the same time that it usually takes me to do my work. I just add more possibilities to it. So this is an example of what we do here. So I'm washing that color over the shadow that I did and over the area that I have not painted yet. So that way it's going to both deepen the shadow. It's going to keep the highlight that perfect quantity of value. So whatever value that I washed over to get that shadow, this glaze where I mix in the, just the yellow ochre is going to knock it back that same degree. And that's, that's what the power of doing things like this and this, this sort of stylistic allows. And I can just kind of be free with the paint because comics gate is about freedom as we've been discussing all day today, um, which is great. Um, and I can allow the paint to kind of give me a texture and that texture works really well for stone. And so that's a huge part of what I'm doing here. You'll notice I did a wash on the moon up there, but the moon is a much smoother wash for the way, I, you know, wash in air quotes. Um, and that's the thing that for me makes all of this so fun and so rewarding is to create again. I say this all the time, but I get it from Kurosawa and George Lucas, two of my uh, art heroes. Um, it's about creating the immaculate reality. Whether you use that for the lived in universe um, where Kurosawa is pouring, you know, tea into these cups to where it's the equivalent of the teacups being used to the typical amount that you would see. So they've got this particular patina to them. Um, or George Lucas creating that lived in universe that we all know from Star Wars. That's what that immaculate reality is about. And that's why we, we do what we do. We want to create something to where when you're reading this comic book, you're being transported. It's taking you to the, the universal horror movies back in the day. It's taking you to the hammer horror movies back in the day. And we're going to make something beautiful for you. In addition to the floppies, there are at least three different trades of it. Yeah, I think I got a two-pack trade or something. I can't remember, but it was square bound. Um, Book of Magic is where I first saw those guys. Mobius was awesome, too. Yeah, Mobius... I saw Mobius and I saw, um, God, what's his name? Oh, God, I was that tired. Alphonse Mucha, freshman year of college. And I just, my mind was blown because Art Nouveau and those organic lines that you see, like right here in all of my panel borders, where, you know, she's sitting on this old tree and the werewolf is telling, about to start telling the story of how Nosfero, he came to be Nosfero's adopted father. It's a little bit, I mean, there's, I tell you what, I've been thinking more and more about the Count of Monte Cristo as I work on this book, because there's a huge element of that. And um, and then it pans over and it becomes the werewolf right there in silhouette. And then the werewolf's body and shadow becomes the night sky over Egypt. I, I like the idea of allowing the eye to kind of flow through the layout pages. And that's what's so fun. Um, AH, uh, Books of Magic, Harry Potter, before Harry, yes, yeah, that's true. Um, let's see here, uh, wherever did Rowling get her ideas from, I wonder, there you go. um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, it's, it's, we're all sort of standing on the shoulders of giants and, you know, it's, it's a fascinating kind of thing. You know, I think that, um, I always think about it this way where, you know, uh, when we talk about, you know, uh, Ub Iwerks and Walt Disney getting ideas for, for, uh, Mickey Mouse from George Harriman's crazy cat, right? Um, it, there's definitely something to be said for that, obviously, you know, but I think crazy cat is, and, or even Felix, the cat for that matter for Mickey mouse. But when it comes to what, you know, sticks in the, the collective consciousness, Mickey mouse, who will hopefully be in the public domain soon, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is, is a, uh, is a unique example of where it all sort of comes together. Harry Potter is that way too. You know, Star Wars with the Spice Mines of Kessel and all of that stuff. I mean, there were so many things referenced. Uh, the Flash Gordon opening uh, titles, for heaven's sake. Um, but sometimes, as you, I know you know this, all this because you're a connoisseur of pulp like I am. Um, it all sort of becomes its own thing, you know. It, it all 
sort of, you know, tra you know, transitions into these different um, eras of pulp. And what I really want to see happen in Comicsgate and why I'm here and why I'm doing my damnedest to uh, make a great book for you guys is because I, I want this to be the start of something, but it's also like putting a flag in the grounds to me and, and, and to, to people and saying, no, 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 you can, you can desecrate your superheroes, but you can't desecrate the idea of heroes. Do you see what I'm saying? John is here. I knew you'd be here before long. It's great to see you, John. Um, all this on the forum just off where we're laying. It's been a moment. Doing well yourself. The Color of Magic is a great book. Excellent. Um, let's see here. Hey, Jordan Horst. Uh, where's Jordan Horst? Is he heading out? Oh, hey, have a crazy night. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I have a crazy bad migraine right now. Just coming uh, out of the tail end of it. I'll be lurking tonight. Listen, Jordan Horst, feel better, my friend. Um, yes, and John is here. Uh there we go, John. Um, I see a little CC Semph and oh Hans Bach in your painting. My gosh, thank you. Um, Harry Potter. <laughs> John's here for like five seconds, already killing me. Uh, the Color of Magic is a great book. There you go. Hope you feel better. See, look at this. Lots of support here, man. Um, uh, Lane, it's been a moment. How you doing? Um, I drink only the oldest version of Mickey. <laughs> go public. Yeah, yeah. But either way, the Abbey Works version is what I love so much. I love that version. It's so good. Um, let's see here. Angela Curry is here. Tip of the hat, Angela Curry. Great to see you. Um, I haven't seen you in weeks says, oh gosh. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Is this, uh, Dreykos or is it Dreykos? I gotta hope I get this well. Um, but yes, absolutely. What's up, Ryan Johnson. Great to see you. Angela Curry is saying Jordan Horst. I had one. Oh yeah. The migraines are out in force. Um, I had one yesterday. I hope you feel better. I'm sorry you had one there, by the way, broken compass comics. Hello, John. Hey, shout out to chat. Good to see you. All right, guys, let me see here. There we go. <laughs> People are laughing at probably my pronunciation there. Um, but this is the thing, right? Is that you? no one can own the wolf, or no one can own werewolves. No one can own Dracula and vampires. Nobody can own, uh, depending on you know how good your lawyers are, nobody can really own Sherlock Holmes. Nobody can own superheroes. If they want to trash their superheroes, uh, go for it. It's not mine. It's like someone, you know, saying they're going to burn their own house down to spite me. Uh, go for it. I'm not going to be affected by that. But I want to create heroes that are owned by me and are owned by the creator of the thing who has reverence for the genre, reverence for the audience, and is not going to tell them that what I promise to make, which is a fun, adventurous hero yarn, is not going to, is going to be something else. It's ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? That's not why people are here. Okay, there we go. Is it... Uh, hold on a second. Is it Dry Akos? Am I right on that? Dry Akos? I hope it's right. Um, but uh, sounds Greek, is it? Very good point. I think there's an argument that they can own the label superheroes, but they can't own superheroes. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I think that... I, I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, um, it's like, uh, you know, I, we can be creative. Like Batman and all of these characters are so based on that history of pulp and pulp fiction that it's, it's not like they were wildly original themselves. However, you can take these things and add these wrinkles to them that bring them to this new level of depth, this new level of creativity. And, you know, it's like, uh, look at what Eric Weathers is doing with Battle Brick Road, guys. He is reinvigorating these characters in the public domain and really making them their own thing. I mean, his is not, you know, he's really going some great places with it. And I should add Zeb as well, the writer on the book um, who he's collaborating with. But they're doing something amazing. Look at what Von Klaus is doing with Terror in the Trenches. Look at what Gabel Taib is doing with the superhero genre with Dave Williams. Um, the amazing David Williams and Gary Martin. I mean, this is this is the stuff we're doing here. You know, um, <laughs> of course he does. Of course he does, Antoine. Um, let's see here. Yes, absolutely got that one. Got that one. Hello. Uh, this piece is coming along so nicely. Thank you, Rock Crin. I appreciate it. You know, the thing is about it is that, um, guys, this is going to be a comic book that transports you and inspires you. I mean, I just love art. See, I, it didn't take me that long to get to it. I love art and I love comics so 
much. And it's <laughs> Eric, did you hear, did you, <laughs> did you sense I was going to get a shout out in your book and how excited I am about it? Is that what happened there? Is that where we telepathically linked? Yeah. I hope, um, I hope you're not in Oz right now. And I hope that storm is calming down in a little bit. Cause that was nuts on stream. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Great to see Eric Weathers here. Hail Eric Weathers. The, uh, the phrase superhero is jointly trademarked by Marvel and DC Comics. Yeah, let them have it. You know what's uh, not trademarked by me, but sort of trademarking. I'm trademarking in my mind for this. I call Nosvero a supernatural hero because that's what he is. He's a supernatural hero. He is right in the vein of Dracula and all of those people here. Uh, glad to be right. Always hate offering, <laughs> offending through my ignorance. Uh, tis the end of my day. Have a great night. I'll just take care. You sleep well, brother. And uh, yes, absolutely catch it on the replay. Uh, your color transitions are so good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's really kind to say. Uh, Eric Weathers, uh, don't look behind the curtain. Yeah, don't. It'll ruin your life. Uh, let's see here. Hail John. Uh, see you all just absolutely sleep fast. Uh, everybody's saying hello. Yeah, exactly. Don't look behind the curtain. It'll ruin things. Um, so this is the thing, right? When we're, we're working out on this stuff and trying to figure it out, the thing that, that tripped me up so much about color when I was trying to learn it, when it comes to painting, when it comes to using color and color theory, it's very similar. And I often say this, um, it's very similar to learning how to swim. It's better you've never been in a pool before than you've been in a swimming pool and had a bad experience in a swimming pool. Same thing with color theory. If you've had bad experiences trying to use color or you've had bad instruction with how to use it and you've built up a fear of it like I did, it is so hard to undo that so that you can actually just learn how to paint. And one of my favorite things about you know teaching painting and talking about painting is letting people know that I was not good at it in up until the age. I wasn't even good at it. I was not comfortable using it until I was in my mid-20s. So it took me a while. I was drawing, 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 terrified of painting, terrified of color. And it was just a couple of bits of advice, like limiting my palette and all those kinds of things that made me able to do this stuff, you know? And that's where it comes down to. Everybody's saying hello, 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 and hello. Yeah, guys, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed to this channel yet. We are moving right along, as the Muppets used to say. Um, and we're getting there. So yeah, I mean, for me... This is my way of waving that flag for Comics Gate and waving that flag for independent comics and waving that flag for what I have always wanted to do as an artist, which is make the kind of artwork that the audience deserves. The artwork that the you know great Carl Lemley Sr., who is the founder of uh, Universal Studios, uh, did all of that that great work he did with the Universal Monsters, Phantom of the Opera, and his son, Carl Emily Jr. Um, it's 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 amazing the stuff they did. And and I really appreciate it and tip my hat to it. John, I could only imagine trying to learn how to swim in the ocean with all the waves in your face. I, I honestly can't. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, does the swimming pool theory work with perspective? Yes, 1.2 point, et cetera. I think I swam in those bad perspective waters. Yes, it does. Um, I can only imagine trying to learn how to draw swim in the ocean. Hi, Sean. Are you selling your original art on your campaign? Okay. So um, there's, uh, I don't, I, I'm sell, I have an original art or head sketch tier that's sold out, unfortunately. Um, but there is a drawing, an ink head sketch in the books tier. But as far as the original pages, I'm not sure yet. I am going to be selling um, two pinup pieces. One of them is uh, the original to two. One of them is the piece that you're seeing in CG vacation. And that's back here. And I don't know if I want to put those on the campaigns or do a direct sale. It just depends. So yeah, that's, that's the big thing. Hello again, comics legend, comics legend. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see. We're saying hello. I would sit in the kiddie pool because it was always so warm. <laughs> it's on. You're killing me. Oh my God. Yeah, that it, it, that it is. Um, so yeah, I have a perspective video on this channel somewhere where I talk about understanding one point perspective in a way that uh, helps you to understand three point perspective. And uh, yeah, perspective um, was one of those things I had a bad introduction to. And then my mentor uh, in comics gave me a great introduction to it and it changed everything. It changed the way I saw it and it changed the way I understood it too, which is the main thing. So now we're going to have some, gosh, I swear, 
I blame you guys for uh, helping to bring out the Bob Ross and me. Now we're going to, let's have some fun. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody, let's have some fun. Let's take it down a little bit. Let's not have our voices be so loud. And, and let's have a good time here because we've got some people sitting back listening to this stream who are trying to recover from a migraine. And uh, I'll tell you what, the last thing they need is for us to be getting too loud. Um, is this, uh, wait, is this for um, Nosfero, this page? Yes, absolutely. This right here. The uh, the other thing is for uh, Phil's book. Yes. So I don't know which book we're talking about, but something. <laughs> Bearing is being. There we go. Um, let's see here. One of the marks of a good artist is to be able to overcome uh, bad first exactly experiences and bearing no worse for exactly. What is that uh, famous quote from Churchill? Um, the key to uh, the key to success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. It's very true. Beat the devil out of it. There you go. That's how we do it. Uh, just beat the devil. <laughs> exactly right. That's right. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we got people with migraines, so. I mean, one of the things people don't understand is that I actually grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, uh, and I, actually, to be honest with you, uh, so did Stephen Rockwood drawing. So when I like to talk about these kinds of things, you know, you got to understand, uh, it's not just about painting monsters. It's about painting little critters everywhere. And uh, werewolves are my favorite kinds of critters, but I also like uh, vampire critters and uh, even Thulu critters. So everybody just kind of sit back and remember that uh, there are no mistakes in this world. There's only happy accidents. That's how we're going to do it. Shoot. Now, I'm just going to mix up a little bit of yellow oxide and a little bit of manganese blue, just like it. That's how we're going to do it, just like it. Just mix it up here. You just want to get in just a bit and roll the brush a little bit. Just roll that brush just a little bit. Here you go. And now we're just going to go in here, and we're just going to say maybe, 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 maybe there's a little river here that runs right through here. Maybe that river is just a little bit like the Nile. I got to be honest with you guys. Mrs. Jetty sometimes says I'm living in the Nile. That's for sure. But that's okay. That is okay. So we're just going to wash that in there just like that. Just a couple of hairs and some air. That's what we're doing. Just like it. Now, it doesn't matter if we go over that line just a little bit. That's not going to matter. Because this is going to be okay. <laughs> Griffy the Griffiness, it's great to see you here. People are, people are needing this right now. People are needing this right now. You really need to have Mandy Summers co-host with you some stream to get your Southern on. Absolutely. Oh, that'll happen at some point. Mandy has a Southern accent that I grew up around. It's like she sounds like so many gals I grew up around. That's the way it is, you know, and it's, it's fantastic. Got some happy little pyramids right there. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Those Egyptians, they were able to move big stones, big things in their lives, and they did it working together, just like what we're doing here. And if you believe in working together, just like, Sean does right here. I want you to think about back in Nosferu, the Crypt Walker. But if you don't, well, that's okay, too. We're just happy to see you right here, right now. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. My Florida accent doesn't manifest until I start drinking. Well, that happens. Sometimes we start drinking. You just want to make sure you don't drink that turpentine. That's for sure. Uh, did you cover the canvas? With, oh, I did cover the canvas with uh, a liquid white. That's the key. Just a little bit of liquid white. That's the key. That's right. What it's going to do is it's going to allow all those colors underneath to just pick up a little bit. It's going to help them to flow. That's right. It's going to help those colors to flow. And remember, when you're painting, you want those colors to flow and blend into each other. We don't need to worry about those colors touching. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. Just letting those colors flow. And you got to think maybe Maybe, maybe, maybe there's going to be a little bit of a, a shadow right there underneath this boat. It's going to be a reflection. Now, you can't see the boat yet, but we know where it's going to live. That boat's going to live right in here. We're just going to take that and just kind of move that along just like that. Just like it. That's right. And it doesn't matter. Maybe in your painting, it's going to be in a little bit of a different place. And that's okay. 
Your painting is your painting. It's your world. You have total power and control in this world. Yes, you do. You have total power in this world, total control. There's so many things in life that are beyond our control. But in this little world you're making, you're in charge. You're in charge. Don't forget it. There we go. There we go. Just a couple hairs and some air right there. Just lightly touch the canvas. Lightly caress it. Caress that canvas. That's the key. Right there. That's the key. Just caress that canvas. Right in there. There you go. Just like that. <laughs> Jay Lee's like, what did you walk into? I'm possessed by Bob Ross. It happens, man. It happens, yeah. <laughs> I don't think Bob could break character like I will. They're pretty sure they found the Great Labyrinth not too, ooh, not too far away from the pyramids on the Giza Plateau. It's like 48 giant stone rooms underground. I love that stuff. I love seeing people walk around on that stuff. <laughs> Antoine is cracking up. That's right. Death on the uh, Nile was quite, I'm guessing that was Nile was quite good. Uh, the new one, I mean, never seen the original. There you go. Antoine. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Sean, <laughs> that's right. I'll tell you what, I'm just as uh, high as a kite. But you can't get very high when you put away that pound cake like I do. Mrs. and Jetty's always bringing it home and she's saying, who ate all that pound cake? And I just make sure to, to blame it on the kids. That's right. Just blame that on the kids. That's the key to a happy marriage. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. That's the joy of it. Now I'm going to get out a little bit more of that liquid white. And we're going to see what we can do here. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. We're going to take that. And I'm going to grab a number six brush. Number six round brush. Now, this brush is a little bit rough. It's a little bit, it's been through some things, but that's good. That's going to give us a nice little texture here. And we're not going to worry about getting a little bit scrubby with this brush here. So let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Here we go. Let me, let me remove this chat right there off the screen so you guys can see it. And I'm just going to sweep that brush right over there. There we go. Sweep that brush right over there. Just let it. Let it do what it's gonna do. Get a little bit more of that paint. Just sort of sweep it like that right there. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. We're just sweeping that brush along. Grab a little bit more of that white. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I just saw something in the chat. Let me make sure I sort of beat some of the paint out of it right there for you. That's for you, Jay Lee. James, <laughs> James is here. Hello, Jonathan, and all of you fine folks frequenting the chat. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you guys are hitting that like button and subscribing to be sure. And hey, James, uh, much love. Great seeing you here, my friend. Um, let's see here. Antoine Dennison, I forget you've said where you grew up. Um, are you, uh, I forget if you've said where you grew up. Was it in the South? There you go, Jay Lee. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to have got to beat those brushes. <laughs> yeah, just sweep it along. There you go. Didn't Bob Ross use that voice because most of his audience were women? <laughs> That's... <laughs> no, I'm not sure about that. Hello, James. Hey, how you doing? 41 people watching Bob Ross 2.0. That's kill me. John... Oh, man. That's killing me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's great to see all you guys here. I was born in Lake uh, Forest, Illinois, but I've lived in the South as well. Uh, Louisiana, as we say, and, and Mississippi. Uh, that's right. Uh, Lord Crack at 33, got to make those sounds or else it don't work. <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> you guys are absolutely right. So now we're going to mix in just a, a little bit, a little bit of, of white right there. Just a little bit of white, you know, and we're just going to, just going to maybe, 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 maybe we're just going to sweep that across right there. That's it. Just move that across. There we go. Let that just sort of all melt together. We're not worried in our world about these colors mixing up. That's how it is. All the colors in our world can get along and be together, just like in Comics Gate. That's right. That's right. No critical race theory in this painting. The colors get to be together and they can understand each other because it's just color after all. 
It's all part of one big painting. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There's a little Bob Ross for you. Uh, <laughs> Hey guys, I'm making it. Yeah, absolutely. Bob Ross was also, uh, yep, absolutely. In Alaska was a drill sergeant in the Air Force. That is absolutely right. <laughs> That's the way you go. Yeah, guys, we're having fun. We're making cool stuff. He kept dr <laughs> drilling after the Air Force. Yep, that's right. Uh, Dennison got him. <laughs> I just got that. Get a mix of a bunch of different cultures. That's exactly right. Best episode of Bob Ross was when he had his son and said his son only paints when he needs money. <laughs> there you go, right? If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. That's right. Um, let me see here. So now what we're going to do is, because we've got a little bit of that media in there, I'm going to go in. I'm just going to drop a little bit more of the manganese blue in there and sort of let that do its thing there. There we go. Bring that around. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Let's see if we can make it so you guys can see that just a little bit more. There we go. And this is a painting from No Sphere of the Crypt Walker. So when I say it's a fully painted comic book, it's a fully painted comic book, and every single page in this book is going to be its own little work of art. Do you know why that is? Because my backers in Comicsgate deserve it. That's why. And that's legit. Because Comicsgate and all of you guys helped make one of my lifelong dreams come true which was not just doing comics. I did my first pro job when I was 17. That's not what it was about. What Comicsgate gave me is a return to that joy of meeting new friends at the comic shop and at conventions where the only thing that we measured our potential friendships off of was our shared interest, shared passion, and our open-mindedness about getting new things to be passionate about from our fellow fans and that is worth more than gold there we go just bring that brush right around there there we go and that's how we start to make this happen there we go and now we're gonna zoom back out and we're going to see, there we are. We're going to see how that all starts to come together once that focuses. You see what I mean? Extreme close-up, that's the key. Yeah, Son of Ross episodes were great. I just love this werewolf panel. It's just like the River Nile. <laughs> that's absolutely, is that like the River Yeah, it's like the River Nile. Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, extreme close-up. That's the best part of CG. It's people actually passionate about comics. Again, it's a renaissance. You are darn right it is. It is. It's a comic book renaissance. It's an American pop culture slash global Western culture renaissance because we got our family in Australia, our family in Europe. Um, the people who who are the the keepers of the flame, which is to say, aspirational, creative, imaginative works of fiction told in panels, told in the language of art. And it is, I think the French have it right when they say, they refer to comics as the ninth art. Uh, they give it its own designation. I think the ninth art is a really great way of looking at it. And it's not about doing anything that is, you know, anything that is less than excellent is the best way I could think to put it. Let's see here. Uh, this is CG. The moon needs to be in the foreground. <laughs> That's absolutely right. It is in the foreground. It will be. Art passion will not die. Absolutely right. And neither will the passion for good art. It never goes. 
And that's what I love. You know what I mean? John, amen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, John, amen. And let me say this too, because this is important too. Um, uh, sadly, there are no more local comic shops where I live. They all went out of business. So I'll tell you this. Comic shops, is I'm sure you know, and, and everybody often talks about, were um, originally basically just there for back issues. It wasn't till much later in that trajectory that they got to be about new comics. And I think that comics are going to return to that at some point. And one of the things that is going to reinvigorate the comic books, uh, the comic book industry, mark my words, is the fact that you've got a bunch of comic skate books that are very low print run. And if you back these books, it's not, I'm not talking about speculators. I'm not talking about investment. I'm talking about the joy of collecting things. And I used to love collecting things. And what becomes valuable is what people emotionally connect with and what is rare. And there is no more passionate audience than the comic skate audience. And as you see more and more people feeling comfortable saying, hey, how do I get involved in this whole comic skate thing? That's a surefire sign that we're on our way. And that is what it's ultimately about. Um, yeah, when <laughs> when uh, when they pros uh, prosecute us, um, whoa, it just jumped. Uh, that curious predilection will be entered into evidence. Absolutely right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, the, the moon in front. I believe DC gave Bendis the Legion of Superheroes just to spite me. I've been uh, vocal online about his destructible uh, obstruction of the Avengers. They have um, they have him, the Legion, and he wrecked that too. There you go, Jay Lee. I got my first comics at a grocery store. There you go. Then the PX, that's right, um, on the military bases. And I did not actually buy comics, any comics, at a comic store until around 92 um, after I got out of the Army. Well, you know what's so funny um, is that, uh, well, I want to give the license plate, but one of the license plates on our car starts with PX. And I always think of the PX um, because uh, my grandfather was in the Army. So that was like a slang, you know, that we used a lot. Um around our home so it's and, and actually we used to call at the school i went to that used to be a um a military school we actually referred to the school store on our campus as the px interestingly enough so yeah that term uh, brings positive memories to me that's for sure and so here we go so now we've got a little bit of that scope and that scale that we're going for and a lot of this just comes from the repetition and the years of painting and also, um, you know, developing a memory, like so much of what I do is, is from, you know, from memory. And so I always say there's this element of drawing from life, although I do believe it's really important to draw from art, to draw from other people's artwork. That's how the masters learned how to do things. You learn other people's interpretations, you learn their shorthand, and then you can approach life with a little bit more of an understanding of how you translate life into two-dimensional form. And so looking at painters and studying painters has been really helpful to me. Looking at comic book artists has been really helpful to me. And that's how we start to get that believability and that immaculate reality, you know? Hey, what's up, Bronze Age Kid? Great to see you, my friend. Hail all. Great shot. Thank you so much. Tip of the hat to you, my friend. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, nah, it was my dad, uh, U uh, United States Air Force. I was a kid in New England in the 80s. There you go. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's where we find these things, guys. That's where we find this stuff. Is we, 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 well, how about this? We find it where we find it. And if there's a place to find things now, it is the internet. And if there's a place to find artists and creators and interesting work, it's the internet, and to me, this is the most natural evolution of where comics have needed to go to grow their audience. You know, that's what it's ultimately about. And so, if you know me, and you know how I like to do panels, I like to let the panels kind of uh, flow and make these interesting forms so that it, it almost feels like you're, you're staring into a dream. Now, is it a waking dream? No, that's the Lucent whose sequel and its sign-up list are in the description. The Lucent 2, Painted Death by the great Michael Bancroft. So make sure you sign up for that, okay? Because he's about to start a long journey with The Lucent 2, Painted Death. He's about to head down this creative road. Some would say this Battle Brick Road. And speaking of Battle Brick Road, the great Eric Weathers' Battle Brick Road is almost to 100K. And that is also in the description, so do be sure to check that out.
There we go. Going to get that dark. And that dark value that's in there right there is going to be a great anchor for this panel and for how it goes. And remember, I'm not worried about um, I'm not worried about precision to an absolute, but I am thinking about and try to be conscious of making sure that I get that that life in there, that life into these panel borders. Because if it's just angular with what I'm doing in these paintings, it's not going to work as well. And that's what's so great about the stuff that we do here in Comicscape. Nobody's stuff <laughs> looks the same. Nobody's process is the same. You know, and that's what's so fun about it. Let's see here. Oh, any, a Nebraska I meant. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see any and I think New England. Uh, thank you, Dad, for me then. Absolutely. Yeah, Jonathan Jetty is working on a beautifully painted comic called No Sphere of the Cryptwalker. Thank you so much. And then Young Blood came out and I got that. And off I ran getting image titles. Yep, same thing here. I was thinking about Young Blood today. I've got Young Blood staring me in the face over there, recolored um, by the great Matt Yaki. Uh, what's up, CG Metalsmith, Phoenix Animation? Great to see you, my friend. I hope you are out somewhere having a good time in the desert. I'm sure you're between conventions knowing you. Uh, you're like a, a rock band on a tour, for heaven's sake. Um, and, and hail to you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Uh, Michael Bancroft is uh, looking around. Yeah, absolutely. He knows. Battle Brick Road is good stuff. It is. It's a darn fine comic book and a real credit to CG that we have that book. Um, CG Animation, hail Michael Bancroft, hail CG Metalsmith, Phoenix Animation, absolutely. Sean, did you and Bancroft consult one another on your sequels naming uh, convention Nosferu 2 and the Lucent 2? Yeah, you know, we decided to think outside the box. You know, I said to people, some people when they do a sequel, they're like, you know, what are we going to call it? And I, I, I always say, what if we did something numerical? You know, what if we did that? And uh, that's how it came to me. And I, I, I've noticed a lot of other people you know, are, uh, are, are following my lead, you know, but I'm the first person to have pulled that off. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, I was ready uh, to read Battlebrick Road this weekend. Then my oh, AC started leaking. Uh, then my youngest son got violent food poisoning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that Bronze Age kid. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I remember when, um, when we had twins, uh, we have twins still, God, thank God. Um, but uh, when our, our twins were, I think they were four years old someone came over who was apparently getting over norovirus and we all got it. And I tell you what, it's the sickest I've ever been. And man, it's tough when your little ones have, uh, have food poisoning or stomach stuff. Hey, what's up Mason W. Great to see you. Yeah. Hey my man, I'm in the area, in that area. There you go right now. Hey, there you go. It's like, uh, you guys are all like close. You're, you're zeroing in on each other. Um, I was in Bellevue. If that place is still around next to Papillion, there you go. I think, Oh gosh, I'm probably pronouncing this stuff terribly wrong. I apologize. Uh, John, laugh out loud. Yeah, I was uh, talking with Joe earlier and told him Mark sold his she face cover he drew in action, and I almost ended up with it. Oh, my gosh. Nice. Yeah. Oh, no, says Angela Curry. Uh-huh. Um, I hope your son is feeling better, Bronze Age kid. Amen. Yes, we're all sending good vibes and hoping that your son feels better. Uh, I That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a thing that happens, and uh, whew, it takes the wind out of you, that's for sure. It definitely impacts your ability to read comics. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just, whenever my kids would get sick and still to this day, um, it was hard to think of anything else because I, I love those little loonies, even though they're big old teenagers and, and you know, have got their own things going on, their own exciting little lives going on. Uh, it's it's uh, always when we're not feeling well, you know how it is. We go back to being kids, and that's okay with me. That is just fine with this guy. That's for sure. Love those little guys. There we are. Let's see here. Um, oh, let me adjust my glasses here. Uh, okay, I hope you can put this uh, See, I suppose we grew up uh, there, uh, but wasn't born until double O. There you go, 2000. Uh, and let's see here. Yeah, absolutely, guys. It's great to see, like, that's what I say. People don't understand. we got so many different people in the chat, so many different age groups in the chat. They don't know. It's all just about we love quality. Is that what we have in common? I think so. Um, thanks, Angela. Yeah, he's on the other side of it now, but it was horrendous. Yeah, oh, poor little guy. Uh, it's time for that Gatorade, right? Time for that Gatorade and uh, all the other stuff. It gives that energy. Um, oh, I had a losing bit of 10K. Uh, let's see here. I want to say it had a 15K winning bid on it. Wow, there you go. Yeah. Uh, 
John, hello. Yeah, the saying is true uh, that you're only as happy as your unhappiest child. That's very true. Uh, let's see here. I was uh, there. Gosh, got just my glasses in 78 and 82. Real young. Small world. Wow. Um, I got food poisoning twice, both from a Wendy's grilled chicken. Uh, lots of time in the battering. There you go. Now, let me tell you this, guys. Um, if you're going to get food poisoning, um, I'm going to get it at a Wendy's because I loved Wendy's Big Bacon Classic loved wendy's big bacon classic i think that was my favorite uh chain burger right there was the wendy's burger um and uh yeah love wendy's it's good stuff of course depending on your definition of good stuff i know there's <laughs> someone who's a health enthusiast going Jonathan, we gotta work on your good stuff definition and also i'm gonna pray for you and i appreciate those prayers guys lord knows i need them uh let's see here just going to get that angle right in there and see what these dark notes that I'm putting in right there start to do is they anchor the value on either side of this so that you can start to see foreground, middle ground, and background and move this stuff forward. What's up, Apex Comics? Great to see you. And yeah, absolutely. Angela Kirk's cracking up. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, let's see here. I never got food poisoning. Lucky Iron Stomach. Hey, amen to that. Let's see here. John, guess uh, where the home of Wendy's is located. There you go. Right on. Uh, let's see here. Do fraternal twins have the same kind of connection as identical twins? My experience has been, I well, actually, I don't know because I don't, I, I think you'd have to have identical twins actually in your house. But yes, I think that they have a language that they have built since they were possibly since they were in utero thumping on each other, which we actually have ultrasounds of. Um, but yeah, they have this thing. Like they, like I've always had twins. Twins are great. And Hey, what's up, Tommy? It's great to see you by the way. And Hey, Phil, what's up? Great to see you too. Um, Wendy's never did me dirty, but man, that McDonald's screwed me up multiple times. Look, I'm equal opportunity when it comes to eating uh, a fast food chain food. Um, but this is the thing, right? And, uh, and, and I can't overstate this. Um, it is, it, it, all the twins I've ever met in my life have come up to me and said, no matter how much you've seen them and how much you, you can raise them and all that other stuff, you will never know what it's like to be a twin. It is a special thing. And I, I really do believe that. I really do believe that twins just have this special thing, you know, and, and that most of us won't ever, you know, know, unless I'm sure some of you guys are twins and know exactly what I'm talking about, you know? Uh, yeah, Rock Crimson and Hale, Zade Comics, indeed. Guys, if you have not checked it out, the link is in the description. I'm sure someone will shortly be posted in the chat to the amazing book, CG Vacation. If you're a longtime follower of this channel, you know that one of my paintings is going to be in CG Vacation. I would like to thank my man, Phil, for the opportunity. And this is the painting right here. It is an acrylic painting. It is large scale. It is one of the finest paintings I ever did. And it is one of those paintings when people ask me, do you sell originals of your work? Um, a painting like this, um, and I know people have contacted me, is, uh, yeah, it's in the it's in the 1K range. Um, these uh, An original like this, when I put this kind of time into it, it's when someone reaches out to me and they say, you know, I put people on it. Like when people reach out to me about a cover, I'm always, my attitude is always this, is that the first person to reach out for me gets the first chance to buy it. If they can't buy it, it gets passed on to the next person. I understand it's, it is one of those things. Um, but it's, it's like this. It's like, uh, these paintings are, represent so much time. And I've often said that my original artwork is a legacy that the only place it will go as a default is it goes on to my kids. I pass this stuff on to my kids. A lot of artists, um, you know, they part with their originals, um, very sparingly, but these paintings I'm doing right now, these pinups are, they're dynamite and they're the kinds of things that I want people to, to have in their homes and to really enjoy and see the colors up close. And, and I always want people, my attitude for pricing paintings is really simple. I price my painting so that it'll be a joy for me to give them to somebody or to mail them to somebody. They will have purchased the painting, obviously, but I want it to be a joy to put it in the mail. And I want it to be um, something that someone treasures. They really treasure it and they take care of it because it is the only one that you're ever going to see. 
And that is that is the key to it. That's the key to making this stuff. Yeah, this actually this is a character from Clint Stoker's Downcast. And I love it because it's a very steampunk world. And I love uh, Bioshock for that matter. And what I loved about this character is um, Monstro. He's, he's got this this sort of great mysterious um, backstory that Eric Weathers is illustrating some of uh, a story on Monstro. Hey, what's up, Mortal V? Great to see you. Gosh, I just saw you appear there. There we go. <laughs> My God. Oh, what did Rini do to, to get labeled a nerd other than what we all do, right? It's we're all nerds. I'm surprised that you were actually going to sell that. Yeah, it's it's didn't say it was easy. Uh, <laughs> it said it's, but I think it's important to put that, that stuff out there. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the Osio state again, that's right. Uh, you're cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. My friend, I really do. This is amazing. Happy to happy. This is going into the book. Yeah. Listen, uh, it's a pleasure, Phil, you know, that you're my, uh, you're my pulp brother, man. And, and that's what it is. And we, we put this, the, we put the time into every job, into every painting that people deserve. You know what I mean? They deserve a great piece of artwork. The people who commission you deserve a great work of art to include in the things that they publish. You know, whatever Phil does with this, the purpose of this is, because, um, you know, some people say to me, is, is Phil going to make, you know, prints of this for CG Vacation as an add-on, blah, blah. If Phil wants to do that, that is something Phil is going to be doing, on, can do on this campaign because it's, the goal of it is to take CG Vacation. The, the certain way to get a reproduction of this painting is to back CG Vacation. That is the surefire way, if you like this painting, go and back that book right now, and you will have this painting available to you. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. And Eric Huffles, tip of the hat to you. Hello. Great to see you. And I also want to add, we have got in the chat right now, American Comics Company. You're always in good company when American Comics Company is there. Um, guys, hit like and make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you are not. Romy, hey to you, my friend. Hail to you. And it's great to see you in the chat, my friend. You know, And this is the thing. And, and I, I, I'm going to I'm going to say a couple of things about Phil right now. It has to be said. Good to see you. Jedi Dick Sensei It is great to see you. I love reading these names to change your life. Eric Huffles, thank you again for that, uh, for that link right there. Mortal V. Everybody is here saying hello, hello, hello. This is this is the thing, right, guys, is that um, Phil is an advocate and a patron of great artwork in all of his books. He hires the most creative people. He hires the most inspired artists that you're going to see. And he wants to put together something that really transports you. Funny enough, that takes you on a visual vacation. That's what CG Vacation is. It is visual works of art and imagination that are going to be a vacation from all of the insanity of people trying to make you stressed out and anxious all day. That's not what CG Vacation is. CG Vacation is something that's going to put fuel in your tank imagination, optimism, enthusiasm, um, beauty, sexiness, and all of the great things about the true meaning of the world, or the word vacation in a world of imagination. And that's what makes this stuff fun. That's why we spend so much time on the details, because if you want to transport people, you have to build visually for them an immaculate reality. And that is why I put so much time into the work that I do so that when you guys are buying a copy of Nosfero, you are buying a ticket to an adventure where there's always something that's a little bit creepy, but creepy in the fun way, creepy in the haunted mansion way, the pirates of the Caribbean way you see skeletons and vampires and werewolves and, you know, creatures from the Thulu mythos and eldritch gods that is how you make a world that people, listen, guys, you deserve only the best, only the best. And that's the attitude I have when I make this stuff, you know, and I would say that I know for a fact that Eric Huffles thinks the exact same thing when he's working on projects. I know that Phil thinks the exact same thing. This is what we're here to do, to promote books, to support creative endeavors that deserve to be supported and I have to tell you, CG Vacation deserves your support. It's going to get my support as well, um, mainly because uh, my wife and kids want a copy of the book that's got daddy's art in it. But even if you don't have kids who want to see your artwork, I'd back the thing anyway, because I want that incredible collection of great artwork, great artists, and incredible Comics Gate creations to be on my bookshelf over there with Clint Stoker's Dracula uh, hardcover, and with all of the other great prestige format books that I'm going to get. 
And that's what I want, guys. That's what I want for us when we're creating this stuff. So thank you guys for backing these books. We, we don't deserve Phil. I mean it. What are we being punished for? We're being punished, I would say. You know, Alfred Hitchcock had this saying that, um, that he always believed the punishment for the banal existence of our society right now is a good example. But a banal existence is punished with an adventure. And I think in many ways, um, it's not us that's being punished. It's the world of banality that's being punished by CG. And they're being punished by being put into an adventure. And that's what it is. CG is the adventure of creativity. It's the adventure of really being alive, feeling alive, and creating work in a way that is alive and passionate. That's what it comes down to. Uh, John, let's see here. Uh, beach towels have great potential to strike up conversations. You're absolutely right. And by the way... It is, um, it is a really great way um, to, to just make Comicsgate projects and properties a part of your life, man. And it's true. That's why I have a Battle Brick Road cap over there. That's why I make sure I paint Nosferro on my cap. I want as much Comicsgate stuff as I can get. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Apex Comics. I bought two Nosferro books. Oh, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, Apex Comics. I, I love this book so much. I really do. It, I've never been prouder of the stuff I'm doing than the stuff I'm doing right now. Eric Cuffles, ooh, pyramids now. Yeah, absolutely, guys. The pyramids are, are a huge part of this. Like ancient Egypt and ancient time where these connections to far more ancient beings um, is, is what this book is built on. I think all good, all evil, all... Um, all of the things that that we can't even speak about, the sublime, but also the ineffable, are, um, are are go back to this kind of, you know, beyond ancient time, you know, deep time, as um, people who talk about Lovecraft talk about. And I want to connect the world of werewolves as a part as a result of an evolution that started in deep time. And, and, and that we still have a connection with those things that began in deep time. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it rich as a narrative. Oh, my goodness. Hold on a second. I got to mute myself because I'm going to sneeze. You know how it is when you try to sneeze and then you can't. So there you go. Uh, that's right. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Great to see you guys. Jeremy Burtz, great to see you, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Bronze Age Kid, John, I agree. I backed the book and the towel. There you go. See, guys, that's what it's about. CG Vacation. Uh, hey, what's up, Jeremy Burtz? Hey, Jeremy Burtz. Everybody's excited to see you, Jeremy Burtz. Uh, yes, and Bob Ross made an appearance a little while back. That's right. Absolutely had to because the chat demands it. Um, there's a Nerf video game somebody's saying. There you go. Yeah, let's have that. Um, I love Nerf, by the way. It's good stuff. So not punished for our greatness. Hmm. Yeah, you never know. It, it, it's a, there's all kinds of punishment that are available <laughs> I always thought <laughs> no I can't no, I can't when, I, when you're at your weakest the chat will make you laugh to the point of <laughs> killing you that's the joy of it all oh my goodness hail Apex Comics hey Angela Curry Kikazu good to see you my friend hail guys and hail to you um, in spite of Ape <laughs> Capex Comics' valiant efforts, Nosferu remains criminally underfunded. Oh, I appreciate that, John. You're the man. Much love. Um, hello, Gikazu. Uh, let's see. I keep looking at your pages and wondering how it's actually going to read. It's very exciting trying to anticipate and figure out what I'm going to eventually get in my hands. Yeah, that's the cool thing about Comicsgate, right, when you're watching the process, because on slower panels like this, where the uh, the dialogue is, you're going to, you know, or where the, the characters are going to be conversational. You're getting a lot of, of description of this world and it just keeps expanding. I always say that um, the thing about what I love about comics is one, the scope you can get for the same budget you can get for something small, because it's just, you've got to, you've got a page. That's your, your rules here, or that's your, um, that's your challenge. And then what you can do with scope of panels, if you've seen Michael Bancroft's uh, uh, work on the Lucid 2 Pain of Death, and the link for the email signup is in the description, he's doing this Eiffel Tower illustration that is about turning that page and then looking into this work and being captivated by it. It's almost like a, a pause 
you know, that, that just raises your level of engagement and it's breathtaking. And that's my attitude when I'm doing this stuff. So the dialogue and the, the, the narrative that's happening, which is going to be happening around these figures when they're having that conversation about it, it's going to be happening as you float through these panels. That's what it's about. That's what makes it great. I'm so glad you're looking forward to it. I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, Rock Crin, bless you. There you go. Um, and then hold on a second here. Uh, there's strong evidence that the culture we think of as ancient Egyptians were actually just kind of squatting in the ruins of an even more ancient civilization, e.g. an older culture built them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I could just think about all that stuff forever. And I love it. I love hearing about it. Uh, Bronze Age Kid, thanks so much. There you go. Uh, Hail Geek has you absolutely. And see, this is the thing, guys. People get appreciative. Uh, people appreciate you here who are creators. And you guys are connoisseurs and appreciators. Uh, and, and you appreciate um, imaginative works of fiction and creativity. And we appreciate you guys for supporting it. And the, I can't say it any fairer than that. That's what we love. Hail Geek has you. Oh, my gosh. A super chat from the great Antoine Dennison. I doff my cap when I get a super chat. And I have to also say this because I've been told as much is that when you get a super chat, you should have something to honor it. So here you go, guys. There you go. Thank you for the super chat, Antoine. And here you go. Sean, get the P.O. box so we can send you stuff. I promise I will. I promise I will. I will get that done. Uh, I, uh, Miss, uh, you guys just need to reach out to Mrs. Njeti. She'd get it all done. You know, Just leave comments. When is Mrs. Njeti going to set up the P.O. box and, and I can guilt her into it? No, please don't do that to her, that poor woman. Uh, she's been through enough. She's married to me. Jeremy Burtz, Hills 8 Comics. Hail, Jeremy Burtz. No spare with the Crypt Walker, a fully painted comic by Sean and Jetty right there. Thank you, Air Cuffles. I appreciate it. And here you go, Air Cuffles. Sign up for the Lucent Painted Death by Michael Bancroft. There you have it. Indiegogo Projects, that email sign up is there. Do not miss it. Geekazu is cracking up. Connoisseur is a lovely word. It certainly is, Tommy. And I hope everything's good on your side of the planet. And uh, it's great to see you here, my friend. I doff my cap to you. Absolutely. Um, uh, presents for the super chatters. Absolutely. You gotta have it, man. You gotta have it. Um, if I back Bancroft's book, will I be able to read it? If I don't speak Australian, there will actually be an English translation of it. So you don't need to worry. So that book is going to be printed in both Bogan and Boganese, which by the way, a lot of people get confused. Boganese is not a pasta. So for those of you guys who are getting it confused with a bolognese, it is not a bolognese. Boganese is a, is a linguistic turn of phrase so to speak um so it'll be in boganese and it will also be um in the the queen's english uh and so there you go and by queen uh, you know maybe we mean margaret thatcher we don't know uh let's see comics kate isn't doing it right we're supposed to tweet preemptively calling all our fans races to deflect criticism for our poorly written shows star wars taught me this yeah absolutely there's a uh, this guy who has this hilarious show um and does some of the best comedy youtube videos i've ever seen uh, and he did one about that, the marketing of this company. And it's absolutely horrifying and wonderful. If you understood the world of Pogans, that's absolutely. The world is a carousel of Pogans. Absolutely. Uh, nice. There you go. It uh, doesn't matter. Even if you read it, you won't know what it's about. That's right. It's a mystery. Um, uh, we're not where. <laughs> there you go. I heard couples. I know you guys are killing me. We're <laughs> Will there be a lightning stick ash can? That's absolutely right. That's that's my call sign. Hey, what's up, Teflon Ron? It's great to see you. Hail to you, my friend. Glad to have you in the chat. What channel, Sean? Oh, for heaven's sake. Hold on a minute here. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, YouTube. Let me see if I can find it. Here you go. So it is Ryan Long's channel. There you go. Hang on a second. Woo! Didn't get the audio off on that one fast enough. Uh, let's see here. No, no. Where is it? Uh, let me see if this is the one. Hold on a minute. Oh, I'm so close to finding. It. I'm. I'm. This is gonna be dead air time because this is. I believe this is. This is worth doing. It's. It's a fight worth having if I can track it down. Uh, God, where the heck is it? All right, it might take me a little bit longer. But um, the channel is called, hold on a second, uh, Ryan Long.
There we go. This should find it. Okay, here you go. There you go. This will change your life, probably for the worse, and it will terrify you. Um, and I love it. So this is, yeah, this is the, if, hopefully that's the right one. Uh, that's the marketing campaign. Somebody click that link and let me know if it is the How Companies Advertise Now uh, link and not just a link to the stream, which could happen. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy stuff. Yeah, hail Angela Curry. Uh, what I miss, exactly. Holding on, says John. Yeah, yeah, he's funny. He's he's bare knuckle funny. Yeah, he gets it done. Uh, it it will it will put you in the hospital. Like I, I we were laughing so hard we could not breathe. Like it was it was some dark stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's right up my alley. That's just my game, as Doc Holliday would say. You know, it's it's life changingly funny stuff. But when Moke when Moke when woke meets racist was the one that put him on my radar. And I went, oh, good. That's exactly what I'm dealing with every single day. Particularly if you are, uh, particularly if you are <laughs> mixed ethnic, it rings. It rings true. Imagine being a normal human being and having to work for an advertising agency these days. Oh yeah, absolutely. It would. It would absolutely, you know, crush you. Uh, Teflon Ron, I just got here recently myself. Apparently Bob Ross was here. Yeah, absolutely. Bob Ross, the spirit of Bob, Ro Bob Ross made an appearance for a short spell, but you guys know how that is. Mm. Coke is it. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, Woke Meets Racist was brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely fantastic because... Um, yeah, it it points to, yeah, it points to the obvious absurdity of so many of the logical fallacies that make up that world, and for those of us who are, um, who actually believe in the idea that different people from different backgrounds can and should hang out, who believe in say the Star Trek mythos, which makes a little bit of sense there, um, and that that's a good thing, and that different perspectives, different ideas are there, but also that we used to create fiction to showcase our shared dreams and not dissect it in terms of political abstraction. And that's important for us, for our, for our, our, you know, well-being, I should say. And that's a big one. Oh, it's a drink stream. Yeah. It's the only kind of drink I can do. Dr. Pepper is greater than Coca-Cola. Okay. I know where you're from now, Eric. That's, that's such a regional thing. Let me tell you something, Eric. This is serious. Let's, let's get serious here for a minute, as opposed to all the other nonsense I've been doing. I want you to know that when my wife's dear friend, um, and and if anybody wants to send out, um, if you pray and you want to send out some prayers, she's uh, she's uh, yeah, she's recovering from from some uh, some chemo treatments and things like that right now. She's a great gal, but uh, whenever she came up to visit, she loves Dr Pepper, loves it, and I want you to know we would always make sure we had Dr Pepper in the house for. Her. Um, She's my wife's uh, best friend since uh, kindergarten they met. And it's great. You know, it's just great stuff. And she's a great person. And uh, we love her very much. Uh, good night, Sean and the Mighty Chat. Take care, Apex Comics. Sleep fast, my friend, and sleep well. Uh, let's see here. Timothy Fitzgerald, just popping in. Congrats on 25K. When will you reveal our trading cards? Soon, my friend, soon. And that's another thing. Okay, so let's talk. Yeah, woke. <laughs> Did Sean just say woke? Shit? No, never. Um, I'm the opposite of that. I, I'm, I'm slept. Um, so when will I reveal the trading cards? Uh, here's, here's a two, uh, two fold answer. One is soon my perpetual answer for things, but two, when people ask me, are you going to put original artwork from this campaign on the campaign page? The answer is yes. I'm going to put the original artwork for the trading cards on the campaign and they will be available for purchase. And I'm going to make sure that I announce the trading card art on the YouTube channel um, on here. So I will make sure and I will put out tons of I will put it out everywhere. But just so you guys know, I'm going to make sure that when we release those, they'll be here. So don't you worry. Th that's going to be the twofold cool answer to that. And I'm excited. I don't think I've said that before right now since you asked that question. Uh, Apex Comics, have a great night. Absolutely. Um, Awaken with JP is such a fun channel. Absolutely. Uh, good night, Apex Comics. Whoa, we just jumped again here. Uh, yeah, Rock Crane. Yes, JP is great. Uh, Dr. Pepper 
it's a sweet thing indeed coke is way better than dr pepper timothy fitzgerald now things look what happened now we've descended into politics uh coke is way better than dr pepper my baby mama is a big pepper fan listen they're good people uh timothy fitzgerald uh star trek used to present important ideas for the viewer to think about now it tells the viewer how they must think about them exactly right it went from genius to complete hack writing you're absolutely right because it takes people think that those of us who have optimistic aspirational versions for the future are just naive to the negativity of the world but an articulate inspirational and aspirational vision is not made out of ignorance it's made out of wisdom experience and perseverance as people overcome obstacles and have to use their ingenuity and their their experiences with having bad ideas take them to their logical outcome which is bad solutions um and choose a different way choose to move towards the light choose to move towards something that will make a better world and that's the secret not the actual secret i haven't read that book or seen the dvd but i hear it's it's fine <laughs> uh, it's not might not be for me let's all just agree that pepsi is basically <laughs> <laughs> again guys <coughs> jeez you always know the chat's gonna get you sooner or later later apex comics john how's it going to from to the show i can't afford dr pepper i have to buy the off-brand med school dropout pepper you know yeah that's that's a way of looking at it you know <laughs> it's like timothy Fitzgerald, too long yourself says john costa rica phd pepper right on uh you watching Kenobi? Is that to me or is that to anybody else? The answer for me is no. Uh, John Anton Dennison, laugh out loud. I do prefer, prefer generic myself. Yeah, there's some good stuff out there. Sam's has got some good stuff. Laugh out loud. James LeCurry. Bronze Age Kid, uh, Kid W. SJWs always say Star Trek was always progressive, but they don't understand what you said. Old tra uh, What you said. Old Trek was a question, um, an exploration. New Trek is propaganda. Yes. So here is the thing. The questions or the confrontation with things out there in space helped show character, helped reveal the humanity of the characters. The environment wasn't about revealing the externals of a character. Uh, it wasn't about so many people. It drives me crazy. They don't get the brilliance of that show. They always say, I don't know why people say this, but SJWs would have you believe it. Um, is that, they always say Spock is a Vulcan. Spock is culturally a Vulcan, but he's half human. That's an important decision that they made. Spock yeah. is, in many ways, the thesis statement of Star Trek. And also the, you know, infinite diversity out of, interestingly, there's that word used correctly, out of infinite combinations. Which is to say, not about tribal separation, but about all of us getting together and imagining and dreaming together because that's the foundation of this country. It's ideals that, that speak to the human need and the human drive for excellence um, that transcend all other aspects of a person, you know, and, and hopefully enrich them. Let's see here. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, God, I'm, I'm behind here. Uh, Dr. Thunder. There you go. Pib is better than Dr. Pepper. Things have gotten political. It's out of hand. Groken 2 by Kenneth Roquefort. I mean, is there good artwork in that? Never mind. It's fantastic. My, I, I regret this one thing. I did not back the painted cover for Groken. I wanted to. I'm sure I clicked the wrong thing. I thought I had, but I did not. And I missed out on the painted cover for Groken 1. Do not make the same mistake with Groken 2, guys. Back it. Love it. It's going to be great. Absolutely. Bretsky the Great's there. Eric Huffle's saying 100%. There you go. Um, Timothy Fitzgerald saying, John, doing okay other than a poo upset stomach. I'm sorry. A lot of people have been saying that in the chat today. I guess I'm passing into an old man phase where I can't handle hot pepper hot food. Oof. Yeah, that 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 is a thing that happens. Have you painted the boote on this page yet? No, I have not. Um, but I'm going to. Um, I, I'm looking at uh, some really great reference photos right now. Uh, change your life. They're great stuff. Um, Antoine does saying, yep, cheaper just tastes better. Absolutely right. Um, I love Coke with fries and ketchup. Oh, other than that, I prefer Dr. Pepper. Man, now I want French fries. Um, Roses has Dr. Smooth. There you go. SJW's arts degree pepper. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't. Antoine, no one drink that. No one drink that. It's just pee and turpentine. 
Uh, I have never had Disney Plus. They lost me as a customer after Last Jedi. Um, yeah, they lost me as a customer with the fi firing of Gina Carano. I have to tell you this, guys. I had Disney Plus. Uh, my son wanted to watch The Mandalorian with me. You know how that is. But when they fired Gina Carano, even my son was on board where he was like, peace and we out of here. That's the way it is. Um, let's see here. Timothy Fitzgerald. Ah, does not sound like fun. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It's not fun. Yeah. Oh, just jumped again. Asked, um, holy cow. Um, asked you because I know you found CG via Star Wars like me. When did you stop watching Disney Star Wars? Antoine, hey, Duarte here. Good to see you, my friend. Laugh out loud. Yeah. Um, modern pepper. No, don't. Don't do it. Don't drink it. Uh, Burt's Roses still exist. Jeremy Burt's Roses still exist. Uh, Spock is a living, breathing contradiction. Absolutely. That's what makes him a great character because we all are living, breathing contradictions. I always love when Todd McFarlane did this interview in one of his uh, early documentaries. Uh, it was Todd McFarlane, The Devil You Know, and in that documentary he says, I'm a man of inconsistencies and contradictions. And I think most people are. You know, but most of us, um, those of us like him and other people, we we have some kind of, you know, uh, driving conviction that moves us forward. And for me, it's it's liberty. It's freedom. It's the free and gratitude for being in a country where people have fought. And again, I hope everybody had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend because I've heard so many people, soldiers and veterans and, and the loved ones who've lost people in war say that's what they wanted and that's what they fought for. And. Uh, I hope everybody had a great weekend, but I am grateful for what I have the ability to do here in this country. Uh, what Sean Crokin is broken, my Crokin is broken. That sounds bad. Someone's going to clip that, but it is what it is. Hello, Eric Cuffles. Do arts here. Absolutely. Teflon Ron. This is a light. Uh, this is a life changing pages. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Gina's firing was certainly was a watershed moment. It was for me because it was like an FU to the goodwill that they earned. And it was, it was such an absolutely wretched thing to do. I was fairly happy with, yes, I was too. I was, I, the Luke Skywalker episode really got me. My friend, Michael, who makes Star Trek, amazing Star Trek fan films with the Starship Valiant. Um, I showed his channel the other night on this stream. He, he is, he's got about 10 years on me, I think. Um, and he teared up over it because he was devastated from the word go, starting with the force awakens. He was like, they destroyed the character of Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker was both our heroes and shockingly, we don't look like Luke Skywalker. Uh, and we were able to have him as a hero. Go figure. And it was devastating to both of us. And so to see that was a, light, a little light at the end of the tunnel. But then after that, they just went back to their business. And I stopped after uh, Last Jedi 2. Carano abuse endured, uh, ensured I would not go back. There you go. Hail indeed, says they comes right in, right on. I never had D plus. What about double D? Um, just. Just have a log and be a family. There you go. What's wrong with me? So many things. Yep, absolutely. People say I stuck with my friends Disney Plus until WandaVision. That was nothing like I, uh, I'd hoped. Yeah, that was it started good. It was a shame. You know, that's about in the time we, we bailed on it, I think. But I can't remember. Having followed Moon Knight since his debut and Werewolf by Night. Yes, what a great comic. And talk about influences. Um, in 1975. So, and the same thing goes with, um, oh gosh. How tired am I that I can't call this up? Because I'm now I'm getting the hammer titles stuck in my head. Tomb of Dracula. Uh, hopefully I'm right on that. Um, love that. Love the all that whole world that they created. Um, Marv Wolfman and, and Gene Colan with that. And Blade that came out of that. And then, of course, Werewolf by Night was brilliant. Uh, reaching Rock Bottom. Yeah, it was. I imagine. Yeah, he was. I've heard rumors he was. Yeah, I was emotional when Luke saved them all. Yes, absolutely. Timothy Fitzgerald. They got me, man. So you're telling me Luke Skywalker isn't black. Well, I don't want you to assume his race. Uh, Teflon Ron. I don't think it, it's a little early for that, don't you think? I mean, Mark Hamill's still got a couple of years left, and he might tell us at the end. You're talking about the race he was assigned at birth. Uh, John and Eric Huffles, thumbs up. Yeah, absolutely right, guys. So, you know, for me, as, I, as I'm as i looking at this stuff, and as I try to figure this work out and get to a point where um, you know, I'm able to show like, what is, you know, what is this, what is this, uh, place that we're creating here i have the luxury of because of you guys because of you guys backing no pharaoh the crypt walker i have the luxury of being able to show you guys worlds that are funded by you backing this book and backing this art and i should say that the reason no sparrow crossed 25k tonight is because someone backed it at a very 
high level tonight. And they were a first time backer of the book and they just came in and they made it happen. Hang on a second. Let's see which one of my headphones is dead uh, because one of them just died. Okay. So the right one, the right one always goes first. Um, so I'll get that charged. So when the left one starts to go, that it uh, doesn't get me into too much trouble, but that's the thing about it guys. I mean, I could not have imagined that, you know, things were going to go that way. You know, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, there you go, guys. Yeah, I just want to make sure you guys are seeing seeing this stuff and I'm seeing it. Yeah. Good, good, good. Hey, what's up, Dan Lawless? Great to see you, man. Gross Point Dank in the house, y'all. Welcome, Dan Lawless. Amazing artist. Guys, listen. Now we got to be serious for a second. Another serious moment. Dan Lawless, by my estimation, is the best reason you can have Outside of that, Dale Keown cover as well. Those two are a, a double threat right there um, to back CG Vacation. Dan Lawless's two contributions, two, count them, one, two contributions to the great Phil Diaz, Zade Comics, and Brandon Diaz as well, um, book are sublime. They're outstanding. Believe me when I tell you that CG Vacation is going to be a fantastic collection of artwork and something that will bring you joy and will be something you'll want to have in your house to flip through when you do need a vacation and a vacation of the imagination. I can't overstate it guys. Can't overstate. So hail Phil and hail Dan Lawless. Uh, Tomb of Dracula is arguably Gene Colan's finest hour in comics. Absolutely right for me. And I adore his doc savage, uh, his doc strange work. Sorry, not doc savage work. It shows where my mind is on the pulp. Uh, doc strange work. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there are and there have been greats that have walked amongst us and the, we keep their their contributions alive by talking about them and then people go and check this out. They're just pure corporate now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely right. It is heartbreaking. And that's what we're not. That's we're. this is crowdfunding was the answer to what we needed. Yep. Numbers don't tell the entire story, but they have not figured that out. Yeah, exactly. Like with all things, they'll figure it out, you know, when uh, when they have, what is that, that, uh, that famous quote? They'll figure it out when they have uh, no other options. That's about the only way that they, they learn things, unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to move this over. And we're going to go in and we're going to put some nice. And this is where I like to take out this paint here because um, sometimes I don't want to say it with color. Sometimes I want to say it with value. So this is going to be one of those ways in which we start to build, we start to build the kind of sweeping landscape. Now, when you're trying to show something in the distance, you can do it with two, two different ways. You can do it in with atmospheric perspective, which I'm going to definitely use uh, on a lot of these things, but you can also do it with kind of showing those details getting closer together to give a sense of scope and scale. So I want to show the way that the earth and the sand and rock and the limestone is building its way down to that riverbank. Because again, this is a story and this is a panel about scale. And scale matters because scale is what gives us the epic. That's what's going to build it, you know. And uh, <laughs> I asked Phil to send. I don't know if Phil's still here. Phil, I asked you to email me that trailer. Did you email it to me or did you forget? Um, I do want to play it, but I ain't going to do it on YouTube. I'm sorry. I have a thing about that. I want to have it in my rotation in my video section. Phil sends it to me. I will upload it and make it happen. Um, Malin was loving Dan's Superman painting with the uh, mega jaw chin was a great piece. Yeah. Malin has great taste. Thank you very much. The coach is always right. The way Malin was praising Dan the other day on the stream. I wonder if he will hire Dan for a future project, maybe a graveyard shift or godlike supplemental. I agree. Listen, Dan knows this and I don't like to think of CG as a place where people get attacked. But after uh, one of the post Kang streams that uh, that Dan and I were on, John Mail and I basically attacked Dan, <laughs> praising his work, 
And uh, yeah, talking about how we need to see more of it. Sorry, Dan. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Um, some of us just, we snap. That's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. There you go. Timothy Fitzgerald, I may or may not be working on something for John right now. Listen, that's a vague statement. Okay? So we can't assume that he's working on something for John. Eric Hoffels, there you go, right? <laughs> I knew it. You, you knew that he can neither confirm or deny that. That's what you know, Timothy Fitzgerald. We're not here to uh, start gossip and uh, conj media conjecture. Uh, <laughs> to not hire Dan for Superman based on the sample artwork is absolutely nuts. Absolutely right. And they are absolutely nuts. John, what's with not wanting to play, um, play off of YouTube? It's nothing personal. It's just, have you ever seen me share Windows? It's, it's murder. You forgot to press send this morning and you just sent it. Well, it's too late now. Shanth, Dan are, are uh, Shanth and uh, Dan are next on list after Shelby. I'm missing that. Uh, Dan Lawless is a fan. You are darn right. Sorry, I missed that first one. And Rob, hail to Rob. Rob is my brother. Guys, if you are in the stream and you have not subscribed to Rob Arnold's channel, for the love of God, please go and subscribe to that channel. There's two brothers of mine who I need to see get to 1K. That's Lord Crackhead 33, Jeremy, and Rob Arnold. Make it happen. Rob's comics, The Replicator, is brilliant. I've never seen anybody who is so uh, intense with their attention to detail when it comes to the visual look of his, his work and the, the artists he hires to work on his projects. If you are fortunate enough to work with Rob Arnold, you are going to be pushed to do your most excellent work because that is how... And Rob is not one of those people who cannot... Um, who, who is incapable of appreciating things, but he will let you know when you do your best work. That's just the way Rob is. So please do sub to Rob's channel. Uh, that is the way it is. Hello, everyone, says Rob Arnold. Hello to you, my friend. It's great to see you, brother. Um, Coach was wrong about Mike Patton. So much vari um, variety in his work, um, both with Faith No More. <laughs> that's right. We're talking. That's right. I was about to say Mike Patton. I suddenly switched gears to music. Hello, Rob. Everything just sent it. All right. Hang on a second here, Phil. Hang on a second. Let me go. I'm going to download it, and I'm going to be ready to play it. Watch, watch, watch my stream go nuts, but it's got to happen. There we go. Uh, it's telling me that the viruses have not been scanned, but I do not care. We will see what happens. Um, okay. Let me see if this works. I'm going to try to open this just for a second. I'll make sure it works. Sweet. It does. Cool. Now I'm going to upload it into the stream and we'll make it happen. Rich, let's, let's just make sure we talk about this. Hang on a second. Oh my God, it's moving fast and furious here. Just like the movie. Sub to Rob Arnold. Have I said it enough? Sub to Rob Arnold. One more time. Sub to Rob Arnold. Sub to Rob. John, Replicator, how goes the colorist hunt? Absolutely. Um, pretty good. Think we have one. Yes, we may have a winner. Excellent. Um, Replicator is rocking it out. Yes. Look, everyone, look, this is the gist of what we're trying to say on the stream, okay? For nothing else. Yes, back, no Sparrow. Fantastic. Yes, back, Battle Brick Road. Yes, sign up for uh, Painted Death. Yes, back, Terror in the Trenches. Uh, let's see. Yes, back. Truth, Justice, American Way by my brother from another mother, Gabe Eltai. But this is the big one. Hire Dan Lawless for anything, and it will be beautiful and amazing for heaven's sake. We love Dan Lawless here at Comicsgate. We do. It's the way it is. And it, not just because him and I go way back to a neighborhood in Gross Point Woods, Michigan. That's not why. But it's likely close. But let's talk about Rich Ayala and Roach Balls, a fellow Rhode Islander. Hail to Rich Ayala. Please back that book. It is great. Uh, he's flipped through it, showed me the lettering that's on a stream that we did, and Dan Lawless and I were both blown away by it. We think it's fantastic. It was a great stream, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, someone asked me about having Rich on again. I was like, absolutely, we'll do it. Um, but here's the other thing about it. Um, Rich is also a fellow Rhode Islander, and that I love to see happen. And he brings a lot to the game. Uh, your piece for CG Vacation is fire, Dan. Oh, there's two, and they are both fire. Oh, it's June 1st. How many pages left for... Oh, it's <laughs> for Nosferu. Enough, but it's doable. It's always doable. I, I have the... My... my uh, June that, I can't believe June 1st shocks you. Um, June... The, here's the thing about Nosferu. The way that I work, and this is the same thing with the art books, it's, it's the only... I'm the only person who can do it because I work on multiple pages at a time as I work, so it's crazy, but... Yeah, it's how I can't just tell you exactly how many pages are left. All I can tell you is it's mostly not mostly done. Well, actually, technically, it's mostly done, but I don't like to say that because that's too optimistic. I just like to 
keep it and say it's on track. Let's just say that. Uh, Rob Arnold is one of Ethan's favorite artists. Absolutely. There's nobody who comes close to us. His style is impetuous. His defense is impregnable. He's ferocious. Roach Ball's trailer is awesome too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me go to brand because I'm forgetting what the hell I'm supposed to be doing and then go to downloads and then I'm going to go here, open this and we're going to start uploading it and we're going to see how we fare. And there we go. Let me get back to the comments here. Uh, Hail Z Comics. Hail Teflon Run. Hydro Comics Ben Dan Lawless. It really is always reminded me of the movie Train Day 2001. Hold on a second. What the hell did I just miss? Hold on a second here. Uh, Roach Ball's trailer is awesome. Yes, absolutely. I love that trailer. As a self-proclaimed expert in savage sort of Conan cover artist, I have to say Dan Lawless has the best facial expressions for Conan. We salute you to art. You're absolutely right. Timothy Fitzgerald. Oh, seen Top Gun 2 yet, Sean? It's freaking great, especially in IMAX. I have to take my son to go see that. We have not seen it yet, but we shall soon. I guarantee you, I like Tom Cruise. Uh, and I like the work, you guys. Uh, Truth, Justice, American Way by Gabe El Taib. David, Brohawk Williams, and of course, the master himself, Gary Martin. Please back this book. Back it once. Back it twice. I backed all three covers of this book because I love those guys. They're great artists and uh, a real credit to Comics Gate. Eric Couples, thanks. I was typing that before I saw the link. Checking it now. There you go. Terror in the Trenches by my brother, Von Klaus. We have way too much in common. It is insane. Uh, Teflon Ron, hire Matt Yaki on Colors Rob. I think Rob's already got somebody on his on his shortlist that seems to be working out, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Rich Isles Roach Balls, indeed. It's not Rob Teenth yet, people. Absolutely. Um, how to Draw Comics by Dan Loss. It really has always reminded me of the movie Training Day. There you go. Hey, Teflon Ron, says Phil. John, underrated movie. Hails 8 Comics. Eric Cuffles, I do the same thing. Sumo Thori, good point. Oh, my Lord. It's just hopping in here. 44 gross point blank is a great movie i know i was just watching it today uh when i was being uh, studied my psych profile revealed a certain moral flexibility one of the greatest lines from any movie and i consider dan lawless to be gross point dank let me tell you he's an amazing dude <laughs> Loud air couples we are now in the month for broken two yes we are Nosfero is on track. Cool. You better believe it. My wife goes, this is the thing about being comic artist and creator, as you know. My wife says to me every day when she comes home and sees me, she goes, so you just get, you, I mean, obviously she knows. She's been married to me for 20 something years, uh, 23 almost. Uh, she says, so she's like, your ability to wake up and just go to your desk and work all day. And that discipline, when no one's checking on you, no one's asking, she goes, that just amazes me. And it's, it's, that's all it is, guys. It's going to your desk. Um, the key to discipline is doing something you don't want to do like you love it. So when you love something, you work really hard. But when you're saying to yourself, I don't know if I want to go to the desk, you just go to the desk and you work like it's everything. Yeah. Gross Point Plank was good fun. Loved it. Uh, yes, absolutely here. Um, unfortunately, wait, John, what are you saying? Hold on a second here. Where is it, John? Okay. Sumo Thori, good point. Thanks for the reminder. Dang. Uh, underrated movie. There you go. Yeah, it was. Uh, let's see. If I do crowdfunding comics, I know um, I know how to hire. Dying Days, go YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Dying Days of YouTube is the way to go. Hey, Sean. Hey, what's up, Cranberry Langers? Great to see you. Hail everyone. Holy cow, it jumped again. You guys are killing me, man, uh, in the best sense. Uh, Tom Cruise will be 60 next month, has been acting for 41 years, and he is on track to have his three biggest films in the next three years. There you go. Top Gun 2, Mission Impossible 7 and 8. Let's also say this, guys. I think we all are going to look like that at 60. Uh, <laughs> oh, good night, boy. Uh, good night, you guys. Good night, Cranberry Langers. Great to see you. Sumo Thor, everyone saying hello to Cranberry Langers. Hail everyone. Hail to you. Uh, yeah, he's he's amazing. He's a credit to the force. You are James Hayes. How to draw comics Dan Loss. Uh, doesn't do enough videos or make it easier for me to find his comics and crowdfunding. Did you hear that, Dan? I'm not alone. Yes, sub to the dying days of YouTube, a really amazing artist. And by the way, I know we've got a lot of stuff going on in here in the chat right now. It's going crazy. Why wouldn't you want to go to the desk? I don't get that, nor do I. I told her that too. I said, get out of here. Uh, Zade comics, $79 away from 15K. Help CG Vacation get there. Are there any heroes in the chat? What the heck is going on here? What the heck is going on here? What in the Sam Hill, some people might say. And I don't like to use that kind of language, guys. Uh, that is not what I'm interested in. That's not what I'm interested in. Uh, Phil, can you do me a favor, though, so I can be called out for my hypocrisy? Phil, can you look really quickly and tell me if I have backed CG Vacation? I need to know now, Phil. Can you look and see if my hypocrisy indeed, indeed knows no bounds, Phil? Let me know. 
Have I backed CG Vacation yet? I want to know. I want to understand why I would not have. That frustrates me. The idea of it frustrates me. I don't even want to think in those terms, but here we are. It doesn't make any sense. Why would I not back the book? I feel like there's something wrong if I have it. Is it possible? You, sir, have now? Oh, not you mean. Oh, you just said not. Phil, are you sure? Could you check again, Phil? Like, right now, could you check? Only shows 18 likes? Gotta be more? What the hell is going on here? This is madness. Are you sure, Phil? I, I don't know. I think you should check again. I, I really think we got to check again because I don't, I don't trust what you're saying here. I don't trust what you're saying here. I think you might be lying to the good people of the chat. Uh, so check again. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How did you do that so fast? Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> but mostly he is great. So here's the thing. I've got to... Look, please tell people that the beef between Phil and I both happened and was squashed on this stream. The only way I can think to truly, truly squash this, uh, this beef, let's call it what it is, it is a beef. It is a serious beef. Is by... Uh, a brief word from our sponsors. Yeah. Hey, it's the Diaz Brothers from Zay Comics. And we're back with our latest campaign, bringing together all the greatest artists and talent that CG has to offer. So take a look at... Whoa! I'll take it from your Diaz Brothers. What up, people? It's your boy, Mr. CG. Allow me to be your tour guide on the biggest, bounciest beach party book in CG history. CG Vacation! <laughs> We got bodacious beach spots springing up from the biggest properties in indie comics. Baby, you don't need those guns when you got these guns, you know what I'm saying? Featuring art from the industry's heavy hitters, as well as the best new CG talent. I'm talking Dale Keown, Billy Tucci, R.T. Bear, Shafton Jenny, Renny Draws, and many more rubbing ink on hot properties you love, like Pit, Sheep, First Ned, Sovereign Wolf, Cyber Frog, Chanu, The Lucid, Downcast, oh, I could go on and on. And I will! We got Andy Smith, Kelsey Shannon, PTP, Kaylee, Lil Presti, Monster MD, Rage Tully, Graveyard Shift! Yo, on CG Beach, we even got the weeds covered. Or, uh, uncovered. <laughs> it's gonna be more than 50 pages of pinup perfection. Like Penumbra over here. <laughs> hey, Mamacita, I was just walking by and I couldn't help but notice. Holy crap, what the hell is that? We're all gonna die! Why are you posing right now? So, what are you waiting for? Take a little break and get away with all your faves. You know you deserve it. Back CG Vacation on Indiegogo today. Later, gang. We got Doll, Robertson. Joe Ball, Sontag, Neri MTS, Lawless, Bancroft, Romero, McMahon, Dalton, Casanova. Just too many to mention, dude. Listen, folks, we are one backer away right now. And by the way, subscribe to the Dying Days of YouTube. Amazing, amazing video editing. Incredible genius. Um, I, right now, have recently become, recently become a backer for which I am truly ashamed uh, for what I did. I am backer number 194. Who is going to be number 195? Who is going to be number 195? That's what I want to know. I feel like I should turn around and whoever didn't back the book, back it. I'm not going to judge. I'm not here to make people feel bad. But if I'm just, I'm just going to turn around for a second, whoever in this class, whoever in this class watching the stream right now, who has not backed this book, while I'm turned around, 
I want you to back this book. In fact, I'm going to do something even more than that. I'm going to do something even more than that. I'm going to, to turn off my camera and whoever has not backed this book yet, I want you to back it. Wait a second. This just in. Maromi has said, I am backer 195. Which means, if I'm not mistaken, I can go to the share screen and I can go grab a window or a Chrome tab, depending on whatever fickles your tansy. And I can go to this window right here, this beautiful, breathtaking window. And I can put myself back on screen. I can add this to said stream with Maromi here. It really is. I, I have to tell you, it is absolutely starting to feel this way. But that's how things go. And I can hit refresh. Do you see that? Do you kids see what we do here? It's not the weather's wave. It just isn't. Is it the Shant's shove? Some people have said. Uh, some people have also said it's the Shant's splooge. I don't know how I feel about that. But whichever way, it is time to party. Let me ask you a question. Phil, are you available to pop on and say hello to the fine people here on stream? I understand if you're busy, if you're not near your computer, um, if you're out at the club with a belly full of bub, uh, I understand. But we have to make sure we say this because this is important. This is important. This is for the chat. This is for Maromi. This is for what we do here. Period. End of. <laughs> Boom. 15K. We do it every day. That's the way it is. Elbow cough, elbow cough. It's the Shanth shimmy, says Michael. It's great to see you. I'm here, brother. There you go. All right, I'm going to send you the link. Hang on a second here. How do I even do this? It's that. It's, it's boomer o'clock in the morning, folks. That's just how it is. Now I got to see if I can find my Twitter. Ah, uh, that seems to be difficult to find. Uh, let me see here. There we go. All right, Phil, I'm sending it to you, brother. Here we go. Here we go. And there you have it. And uh, John, be right back. We'll see you in a second. Bow indeed. Guys, this is the thing, man. I've been in this since... You guys welcomed me in here with open arms. I was doing everything behind the scenes with the videos. You guys were very kind about that stuff on Ethan's channel. But when Michael had me on his show and I learned about ARO, when Lord Kraken 33 and the Crack Pack were telling me about things, I was like, I have to make some music. I have to make some noise. Joe Ball, what is up, my friend? Tip of the cap to you, Joe Ball. Great to see you. Um, I said, we got to make this stuff happen. We got to make it rain. And there's a beautiful man here ready to talk. Here we go. Phil Diaz, it is great to see you in here, brother. Not uh, worthy, brother. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, man. They love you, man. We all love you, man. You're doing great stuff. They love CG, man. We love CG. They I do. love CG, you know? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Because it's, of that, is... we could we can bring this awesome book and, and amazing art to it's all these people. Uh, it's so awesome. I'm I'm here working on it right now. I was writing up a blurb because uh, Vaughn was saying that I should add some pages to like actually full pages to the campaign page. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do that a little mock up of what a page would look like in the book, and yeah. uh, I'm gonna pop it up on the campaign. Let me say this, and I think Mortal V sums up what everybody's feeling right now, and it's so true. You know, I mean, and listen, you know, yeah. first of all, let me say this, Mortal V. I don't know. Uh, it's 2022 and love is love. All right. So just knock it off. That's right. Uh, but yeah, it's great to see everybody here. And let me tell you something, guys. I meant what I said. Um, and Ellie is here. Good to see you. Look at all you lunatics who are hanging out here. My friend. I love when I see like people in the chat who are 
who are so game for all of it. It's like they know everything. They know all this. Like seriously, I doff my cap to you, my friend. Um, it's really it's cool. now knows Pharaoh for four hundred backers. Says Teflon Ron. Yeah, we're getting there, guys. We're doing oh, this yeah. stuff bit by bit. But I want to tell you this. Um, you know who else has a lot of pages? Knights who, who don't have squires. Yes, that's some. Listen, Mortal V. That is some great old man humor. Tip of the hat. Much love. Yeah. Um, I'm happy and gay, says Dan Lawless. That's right. That's right. Just because I'm happy and wearing chaps doesn't mean love is love. So, yeah, that seriously, the art from that book looks beautiful. And I do I do have to agree with uh, what CG team, what uh, Von Klaus was saying. Gotta, you got to put up one or two more full images, man, because... This stuff, I don't think people grasp. And it's, you know, I'm not going to give you advice on how to move books, Phil. That ain't yeah. going to be something that happens. Because you know you've moved your share of books, man. <laughs> but it's like, I, I will tell you, you have, like, I don't want to sound like this is a Seinfeld episode, but you've got gold, Phil. Gold. <laughs> I know. But, but here's the thing. This is this is a new a type story. of book. This is yes. a new type of book for us, right? So... Mm -hmm. The campaign's totally different than any other one that I've ran, you know, so it's it's even still a learning experience. Well, I would also say that you're taking a, a, a funny enough to say this to a writer, uh, you're taking a novel approach uh, to this whole idea and you're making it a Zade comics book. And that's what's so cool about it. You know, like we have this, we have these ideas for things that we want to do, but what what we are what's facilitated by people like Maromi and and people who just jump on the bandwagon late like myself um is that we we talk a big game but where was where was he in the backers list phil i don't know that's what we have to ask ourselves um but it's <laughs> yeah if this was a legal case it would be asked and answered that would be the objection i would get objection, objection your honor asked and answered objection. he already bought his book that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, there you go. Grab CG vacation and give it a big old squeeze indeed. And I'm going to tell you this right now, guys. Um, I have been starved for beauty, not made by committee, which is to say ugliness, you know, it's, it's beauty approved by a committee of people who wouldn't know beauty if they, if freaking hit them in the face yeah. and or slap them in the face, dare I say. And the thing about it is, is that when you've got books like this, every dollar you put into Zade Comics is returning on that investment in terms of creativity and imagination a hundredfold. I should know because I recently just got caught up on Lost Pages. And I was like, this feels like the kind of creativity that we had back in the day, during the modern age, during you know the golden age, but I think even more so the the in the 80s and what i think some people call the dark age around the time of image and dark knight returns that stuff but i feel like it's a lot more like the fun and playfulness of the black and white boom you know where you're getting all these characters and all this great stuff but you're yeah. seeing it in full color with the tech we have now because it's yeah. not a retro thing it's a moving forward thing what do you think no yeah totally and and i think that's what why a lot that this is like a, a renaissance or a reinvigoration is because when I'm on these streams with, with creators, you could really tell that at one point in their life and probably still now they were just, just fans of this stuff. You know, a, a long time ago I was on a stream with John Malin and mm -hmm. he asked, he was talking about a tweet, I believe he put out and the tweet was, how do we get to the point in CG where we have we put out a book and it's our version of like Kingdom Come, right? Uh -huh. It's like this just magnum opus. This Everybody knows about it. It is a story to the core. And my take on that, my answer to that was you get someone who is just a diehard fan of, of this stuff. Alex Ross yeah, was it's true grew up on these superheroes and that's you know you, you see it in his work he's yeah he's taking the purest form of of those heroes that he, he loves and putting them into his art and the stories so mm -hmm. you know it may take some time 
you're going to have, uh, and that's what's so exciting about this too. Like we're building these universes that hopefully like my goal is to inspire people to create things because I was inspired by Alan Moore and Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want people to know these stories, but you'll eventually we'll get to the point where you have the fans that have fallen in love with storytelling through us yeah. get the opportunity to tell stories about these characters. And that's, that's kind of like the, um, uh, the, the distilled or version of it, you know, the, the pure, the pure story of it. Uh, and that's what I'm excited about, you know? Well, something I planned to do, and in honor of 15K mm-hmm. and the fun of this evening, oh. I wanted to tell you this, that um, so I want you to have the usage rights for the masquerade painting for whatever you want that I've yeah. done. And if you are willing to cover shipping, I would like to send you the original. Oh, my God, dude. Seriously? Yeah. That's and, amazing. And gratitude for everything that our friendship has has brought in but also in gratitude for everything you've been doing for cg and all the work to come thanks man that's incredible i love that piece dude yeah it's yours thank you so much holy crap yeah i'm blown away dude i do this is this is (laughs) you know this is one of those things that you and i have been talking pulp back and forth on twitter for ages yeah. And I really do believe. Yeah, by the way, yeah, careful, Phil. Shipping is 3K, says Bancroft. <laughs> and you're right. You're right. It is. It's going to be $3,000 redues, which is about 17 pesos. And I don't know what that is in American. <laughs> but the thing is, um, <laughs> the thing is about it is, is when you were talking about that, and it reminded me of that, when you were talking about the, the how do we get a kingdom come? Well, when I paint yeah. these characters, when I do this stuff, I try to paint it like I'm that fan who's got 20 years of passion for it. So that's my attitude is I look at this stuff and I go, uh, the enthusiasm I feel for these new characters that we're creating and this new stuff that we're doing is hard. It's hard to describe, but I say I can see those years. I can see these stories, you know, unfolding. Right. Uh, And, that's the thing that that I love. And when I'm when I'm doing this stuff, when I'm I'm putting together originals and paintings and things like that, it's I'm basically trying to have a conversation with a creator where I'm saying, "Do you get how much I'm into this?" Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And and I always say and I said this earlier on the stream, the originals are 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 the only people you know who who do this stuff. <laughs> sumo Thori. Oh, Sumo Thori. Uh, thank you, Sumo Thori. Much love for the super chat. I appreciate Man. it. So, cover some of the shipping. That's right. Well, listen, this is what we do here, guys. You guys have our backs and you support us. You see good people making great work for you guys that you fund and you make possible. And nothing would make me happier than to see CG Vacation continue to be a smash hit. And for everybody to take these characters we're creating to heart. Because the Masquerade I've taken to heart. Crimstone I've taken to heart. Silhouette I've taken to heart. That's how that stuff works. We do it character by character, book by book. And we try to make sure that that we're creating something that you're always going to remember that you were a part of. There's I love the comic shop. I loved going to the comic shop and buying these first issues and all this stuff when Image Comics came out. But this is different. You guys are backing these projects. You're funding these projects. And that's what's making this stuff so great. You'll be able to say, without me, that book doesn't happen. Without this amazing time I was in with these amazing people, this didn't happen. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that's so cool about it. And you guys facilitate it. And it's crazy, Sean, to see the growth of everything over the last four years. Um in, in CG and and with the stuff we're we're doing as well. I don't know mm. if you caught the stream my brother and I did Sunday, uh, mm. like yeah, midday, and I went back and tracked every first day that we had mm-hmm. on Indiegogo, and it started with you know Magic Cop One. It was just mm-hmm. under nine hundred dollars in, in the first day, and that was yeah. amazing for us. You know, that's yeah. like whoa, this is the first time we're doing anything 
barely anybody knows us. And then through the time, you know, you compare that to after two months, we had $4,000 and we were happy. And then uh-huh. after yes. by the time we closed Magic Cop 1, we had like 13000 And then the first day on Lost Pages 1 jumped up to almost 8000 you know, and now we're, we're through 13, you know, in one day we finished, we got to the point where Magic yeah. Cup won full entirety of campaign and in demand got, which is this book. And it's, it's uh, mind blowing and humbling. It's, it's awesome. And, and this is the thing about it too, which is um, it's no longer a paint stream, but, <laughs> but, uh, but was, was it ever Bancroft might as well join the party. Michael, if you're around, do you want to pop in and say hello? Let me know. A lot of crowd funds can barely get to 900. Yeah, and this is the thing, guys. I was the exact same way when it came to gratitude. I got through that first day. And when people see this stuff, right, and they see the closeout streams that Ethan's doing and, and the launch streams that yeah. Ethan's doing on launch days for this thing, you have to understand, these are creators that have put in a lot of time into this stuff and are passionate. But here's the thing. When it comes to, and, and Nick Ricada was talking about this really, really well, um, and Malin talks about it really well as, as well, is that what we do, we are not bound by obligation or a rule book. We are bound by our passion for the things that we do. And that's the reality of it. And when I, so that you always know when we're talking to each other, we're having each other on streams, it's out of respect for the work that we do. We hire people that we're passionate about as, as artists and as creators and and that's really what it comes down to and you know every now and again you're going to hire someone you're not into you know um for example i was thinking about when you you hired simon bisley but you know things (laughs) happen do you know what i mean there's people who are going to slip through the cracks that you haven't been fans of your entire life and sometimes you you gotta take a chance on someone yes exactly i remember buying that comic and just being so and i still was all the way through reading it but was so excited Lobo's back. Yes. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. That and the paramilitary Christmas special. I freaking loved those books. I read them till the so ink good. came off. So freaking good. amazing. Okay. Michael's looking after Clark. He, oh no. I'm so sorry to hear that. He's got a fever. And the only prescription is me not ignoring him to go streaming. You're absolutely right. The only prescription is more cowbell. And if you people would get that down in Australia, Clark would be cured. But we're thinking of Clark. Much love. Much love, Michael. Give Clark our best. Uh, Ellie Munez, uh, Phyllis Incubus confirmed. Uh, John, look at all these fine people here. Oh, sorry to hear that about Clark. Yeah, this is a, CG is such a hate group. We're like, I hope your kids feel better. Oh, your son's <laughs> got food poisoning. Like, it's nonstop hatred on these streams. You know, it's nonstop hatred. But what are you going to do? Ellie is saying, Timothy Fitzgerald can't imagine passing on Simonson. Yeah, I can't either. Um, because Bancroft, <laughs> that's right. Um, hope your son recovers quickly, Michael Bancroft. Look at this. Yeah, uh, Phil keeps uh, running into these greats like Steranko and working with Keown. Yeah, they say right where preparation meets opportunity. You know, yeah, the infamous Lobo Elbow. Was it infamous or scrumptiouslescent? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And J- uh, Jeremy Burt's also wishing Clark well. We love Clark. Um, and and this is this is it, guys. You know, um, what the fun of Comicsgate, the greatness of Comicsgate is both the creative freedom and the creative responsibility you take. When we make these books, we're putting it on the line. And I think as Ethan said incredibly well when he launched Cyberfrog, and I've been in, you know, I don't want it to turn into, I've been in here. Like they, there's this joke in academia and education that there's different kinds of professors and the best kind of professor. And by that, I mean the worst is the one who every freaking faculty meeting says, well, I've been here for this many years. It's always, it's never, yeah. I've been here for 50 some years. It's like, and you've been sucking the whole time, buddy. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's it's not how we roll. But I, I mean this sincerely, like as, as, as people who, who just because of recalling the history, it's not about myself as much as what I witnessed. I remember when Ethan was launching Cyberfrog and he said, I told my wife, Andrea, and he told us in the stream, I, this is like a trust fall. I'm just going to lean back, and I hope that the fans and CG fans are going to catch me. Yeah. And it felt so great to be a part of that group who got to be there, had the privilege of getting to be there, knowing about it, all those other things that were involved in that, and backing Ethan oh, yeah. because – 
he went through probably more than most people, you know, outside of John Malin and your boy Zach. They went through so much. In fact, I think the only person in recent times who's really been gone, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, but really gone after were Shelly and Aaron Lepresti. They went after yeah. them hard. Yeah. Like yeah, it was yeah. really disturbing. And that's the thing, right? Is that um, you guys have been there for us and you guys have been making sure these books happen without fail for years now. And that's what makes it so great. You know, hail chat indeed, big boy Robo. Uh, and let me just say this. We're all wishing Crackwell, uh, Crackwell, Clarkwell and Crack Prince Clarkwell. Um, oh. We got to love it. Um, cheers all says Michael Bancroft. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Yeah, these people. Uh, these people spamming their chats when they were in CG. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Shelly, you know, gave as good as she got, but you know what? It was not a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know, or even a two-on-two -two situation. It was like this entire group of people trying to make them miserable. And it was bullshit. And much, that's why I put Shelly in the CG Kings uh, intro when I first made it. You know, I made sure to get Shelly and Yanzi in there. You want to talk yeah. about DG people who are kicking ass and taking names. Those two are, are amazing. We are a hate group, also a hat group. So we only back all of these campaigns sarcastically. Yeah, you have to be in Comicscape for a while to get the ironic nature with which we back books with our hard-earned cash. Absolutely, indeed. Crackwell, is that the castle? Yeah, so here's what we're going to do, guys. Um, Phil, stick around. I want to say hey and talk to you, but I'm going to wrap up the stream. I'm here at two hours and 30 minutes. This is my second stream of the night, and I will tell you this. I don't say that to say, um, oh, my gosh, this is my second stream of the night, to say, boy, aren't I lucky to have two CG streams in one evening and get to be with you people. You guys rock, and you've made Nosferro and CG Vacation the successes they are. Hell, yeah. Uh, God, seriously, thank you. God bless you all. Phil, go ahead. Thank you guys so much. Um, this was awesome. I mean, I always love watching Sean's streams, uh, just chilling in the chat. And obviously you guys do as well. So hit that like button. Make sure the bell is wrong so you know when he's going live. Um, and back back his book. I can't wait for Nosferro. And uh, are those art books still available too on there? Yeah, they're available as an add-on because of Phil. Um, because Phil said, I want an add-on for the head sketch tier and a couple others. So we have them as add-ons. So yes, thank Phil for that. Awesome. Yeah. Grab those and, uh, spread the word about CG Vacation. We're like, what, three days in and, Absolutely uh, already guys, yeah. past 15, which is amazing. And I, I, we did get another backer after Maromi too. So thank you in the chat. You know who you are. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to close this out, and then, uh, Phil, I'll catch up with you as soon as uh, we're wrapped up. But i got to close this out with a song, a special song that I composed for you guys with me on rap, voice distortion, vocals. God help us all. Uh, thank you, guys, and uh, we'll see you next stream. Peace. Here's a little something for you busters. Yeah. You're not even learning anything on this beat. Yeah. You think I'm stupid, son. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Yeah. Do you? What's up with that? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. What's up with that? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. Hey to you. Don't, smoke crack, don't, you? don't even smoke crack. You know what that does to you? Huh? You smoke crack, don't you? Here's a little something for you busters. Yeah. You're not even learning anything on this beat. Yeah. You think I'm stupid, son. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Yeah. Do you? What's up with that? Look at me, damn Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. What's up with that? You smoke crack, don't you? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. Look at me, boy. Hey to you. you smoke crack, don't you? Don't even smoke crack. You know what that does to you? Huh? You smoke crack, don't you? Smoke crack. Go on and do it exponentially. What's up with that? It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. Don't even smoke crack. No guts, huh?
I apologize. I forgot you were there. You may go now. 